the Jordy Colada show. Wave your hand out there, baby! Shout out to the show. She puts the pinky into the nostrils, man. Look at that. Healthy competition, there's nothing like it. Y'all grow up. The line's wrapped around the stadium. <laughs> Different strengths. Mm -hmm. I just lost a tooth. It's gonna be fun. You know, we might have a story. I love what you're doing. Ogeron wants to take us fishing this afternoon. Sharif, you play for the bad boys of the SEC, man. We don't apologize <laughs> to anybody. A lot of people are saying you're going to be wearing number seven. I don't really know. I want to. He <laughs> look crazy, Bill. What <laughs> feet on the old man. This is from back to Oh, you know. No, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back with the Jordy Colada show. Welcome into a Wednesday edition of the Jordy Colada Show, driven and powered by our friends over at Go Chevrolet. Shout out to our crew over there at GEAUXChevrolet.com. Stop in and see Nick Richard, Lee Carney, and the entire crew over there. You can always shop the inventory online. Our phone line is brought to you by Metropolitan Health Group. Real doctors, real solutions. Metropolitan Health Group every day. Proud supporter here of the Jordy Colada Show. Jacques will be in studio with us at 7.30 this morning. We will also talk to Brody Miller at 8 a.m., and we'll talk all about the college football rankings where the Tigers pull in at number six in the country in the latest to go out. Sorry about that, Reese Davis. Reese, tough to hide it last night. A true gump at heart, Reese has always been. I didn't know Reese was a, a tighter until the 2011 National Championship, but since finding out, if you pay attention, he'll never let you forget it. And last okay. night, he was, it was a tough night for Reese. That's probably the first time in the show's history that he's done it this late in the season where Alabama has zero Ow. relevance. Ah. Zero relevance. And, and it, in true just out gump of fashion, <laughs> he, could get, nah, he couldn't get over the fact that LSU was still in the discussion and let his feelings be known as he was stomping and pounding his fist on the table. I thought he was going to start breaking pencils at some point to sure. see LSU at number six by saying, even if LSU beats Georgia, they still got blown out by Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Like, whoa, Reese, whoa, buddy. I don't think anybody asked for your opinion. You're supposed to be reading the teleprompter. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just stick to the a, script here, man. We're, pay show. we're paying you to host the show. Nobody cares about your opinion. My feelings are hurt. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa. Hey. What's going on right. over there? Uh, <laughs> a little volume. You're double hey. dipping on the show. Hey. That's that is the our views, show. I know, that's what I'm saying. That's why the views are so good. <laughs> Everybody put it on your screen. Right uh, the Carpool Queen is here, fresh off a trip to the Smoothie King Center. As are you. Uh, just kind of like turned around in the I mean, concession stand line uh -uh. last night. Carpool Queen, right to my left. I mean, if you would have been like one of my girlfriends when I'm sitting here like all day saying, hey, I'm well, going I didn't to the Pelicans game tonight. I know, but still like a girlfriend would have like, texted <laughs> me and been like, hey, I'm coming to the game too. I'll see you there. Where are your seats? Instead, I'm getting a drink at the concession stand. Double fisting, friends, by like, the way. Oh. There, that was Joe's drink. That was Joe's drink and my drink. <laughs> And like, there's Jordy, and I'm trying to just turn my head, and there he is. I'm like, oh, hey, you're here, too? Uh, like, what the hell? Drinking on the job? Uh, we, we, did not, we did not get there until halftime. No way. Yes, and when we pulled up, the ticket booth was, like, pulling the, the gate you're down kidding. on, getting the, on the on the tickets because it was an absolute nightmare traffic. to get out of the city. Oh, yeah, traffic To get out of Baton Rouge. awful. I mean, it was... It was bad. And then, like, you get to the pressure point, and there's nothing there. I know. There were a couple of wrecks on the interstate, though, really? on our way. Yeah. Okay, maybe I was getting on the back end of the cleanup. But, mm -hmm. I mean, like, we were in dead stop traffic oh. for about 30 minutes. Oh, yeah, the worst. we didn't hit that. That's awful. And, I mean, you know, if little Jay's not in the car, because we're scrambling at 530, picking him up from basketball practice, stopping, grabbing a little bite to eat for him but while we hit the road. And then, like, you get to the interstate past the, the Highland Road exit, and it's just gridlock. I yeah. mean, like, it's like, you ain't moving. Um, yeah, you thought you were done with for the day. Like, all right, we got on the road. Yeah, got the right. Food, I kind of thought we were making a like, good time. time. You know, like, we'd be a little late. We might walk in maybe at the end of the first quarter. Right, would be like plan for that. the latest. We left and, at 4.30 and got yeah. there at like 6.15. Wow. It's not worth it. It, re it, it is really is. It. God, there's not a lot. I love those games. I would go every, to everyone if I could. I mean, the Saints travel to get to it from Baton Rouge is a nightmare on a Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. And then like just a typical... I mean, that was a Tuesday night. Right? I know. You know what I mean? Like that was a t now it was a nationally televised game at 6:30. Do they regularly tip at 7? 
No. Or do they always tip at 6.30? It's usually 6.30. Okay, so I mean, 6.30 is tough, man. Yeah. I mean, if you put in a full day and you got, you know, kids with extracurriculars and you're trying to make a weeknight game, um, like I said, I mean, we made it by the skin of our teeth, but we made it, and I mean... Helped ja, turn the game around. Ja put one. I mean, Ja went up in the air, kid. finished, <laughs> kind of switched hands, dunked it, um, and, and and the Pelicans got the win, you know I mean? Like, Jordan yeah, was CJ pulling... Yeah, McCollum outplayed Ja Morant. He did. Um, I mean, you know, Jordan was kind of pulling for Ja highlights and a, and a Pelicans win. And there that's, you go. Yeah, that's kind of what we got. I mean, after the dunk, I kind of looked at the crew. I was like, we ready? There you go. Yeah, I mean, that's what you wanted to yeah, say. Yeah, right. We were all good, huh? Um, but... NBA game is nonstop entertainment. It's, so it's fun. incredible, like it's how so they don't let a second go by without music playing. Like when uh, Brandon Ingram makes a shot, every time he makes a shot, they play the uh, the money song by uh, Pink Floyd. Um, I mean, but there's always sure like he gets that reference. Beats, I know, right? <laughs> and I think that I mean, I was like, is that his call? And they say that like it's like baseball walk up songs. Like they oh. tell the DJ kind of like. When I make my shot, I mean, it's good, you know, I mean. That's random. Though. It is random. <laughs> I just don't see B.I. vibing out to Pink Floyd. No. But if he does, bad respect, drug test that man. New Orleans is a weird city. No, do not drug test parents. that man. Well, I think you think you could, yeah. <laughs> Keep him on the floor, for God's sakes. <laughs> yeah. Whatever he's doing, whether it's weed or hallucinogens. I don't, I mean, it's working. Yeah, right. Guy yeah, can so. play. I mean, he the way he gets his shot off, and I know, look, man, I'm not going to sit on the Pelicans a lot. I know that, that, that LSU football is, is front-page news, and I'm about to get to it. But watching an NBA basketball game in person is incredible to see those guys just up close. How really is. athletic and just different they are than all mm -hmm. of us. I mean, they are aliens compared to us in the way that they can run, jump, their length, the way that they – I mean, John Morant, he makes his mind up. He wants to get to the rim. It doesn't matter who's in front of him. Who's guarding him? Who comes over to help? He can get right by you, and he's like watching Alvin Kamara play football. And he has I mean, like fun he's, the whole time. He's so like liquid. Yeah, yeah man. Really I is. mean, like one time he came down, dribbled the ball all the way up with his left hand, never touched the ball with his right hand, got into the paint, and scooped up a left-handed layup against like five NBA players. I mean, you know, people are like, whoa, ah, ooh, ah. But, I mean, like, you have no, that's so hard to do. He makes it look so easy, though. <laughs> I mean, like, right. it's, it's so, like, it's just like, it's like a, in the backyard for him. Yeah. Um, but Pelicans win last night, and LSU is ranked number six in the country. Um, uh, I, I was asked last night in, in the arena, somebody asked me, what did you think about the Tigers being number six? I, if there's a human element in this in this factoring of the college football playoff committee, which we know there is, Boo Corrigan last night speaking again to the media, and Boo's <laughs> line, I guess alive. the line of the, um, you know, a line of the night is that they have taken uh, week to week improvement under cons uh, under serious consideration. Thank you, Boo. Mm -hmm. uh, we are watching. Boo says you're looking for improvement during the course of the year. And for their defense to give up three points, obviously the other touchdown was a scoop and score by Texas. This is him talking about TCU. But he's just talking about improvement week over week. Um, there's no way that you can close a door with a college football committee if you're talking about the sport right now and not recognize that LSU's program is one of the hottest in the countries. And if we're all human beings talking about that, then it does make sense that LSU – is number six in the country. Moreover, I, as I said yesterday, if they close out the season undefeated, win this weekend, UAB at home, travel to College Station, win there, and then go to Atlanta, and somehow, which I am telling you today, is a real long shot, right? Like, it'll be, it'll be an upset if they go into the SEC championship game and beat Georgia, but don't tell them that. You know, I mean, don't tell the LSU football team that. They don't believe that. They believe that they can go to Atlanta and win the game. And as, as, as we've been saying for the last three weeks, nothing more powerful in sports than a team that believes. Than a team that behind closed doors in the locker room could care less when anybody thinks about them, perceives them to be, talks about them in what sense. They don't give a damn. They believe wherever they play, they're going to be prepared and they can win. And when a team has that, there's nothing you can really do to account for that other than play your best. If Georgia gives LSU their best and LSU plays with that emotion, I still think Georgia wins the game. There are other scenarios that maybe LSU wins. And if they do, and they close out the season 3-0 and as the SEC champs, 
there's no way they can be left out of the playoff, even with an undefeated TCU team. I think that Tennessee would be outside looking in. It may not make sense, and Reese Davis may blow a gasket on national television, but there's no possible way in the grand scheme of the discussion of the college football playoff that you can leave the SEC champ out with a resume with wins over Alabama and Georgia. There's no way. It just that, that I would be shocked. And if LSU did fall victim to that here in this playoff, they would be a great example of why this model is broken. Moving into the next discussions of it. And if TCU closes out undefeated, I don't have a good argument on why they should be left out. I don't. I know that the SEC plays the best football in the country, and if the SEC champ is sitting there and in the discussion of whether or not they should be in, they should get in 10 out of 10 times. And if they have two losses, I get it. LSU was the first program to win the BCS National Championship with two losses. So if it... You know, it's a cool story to make them the first two-loss team to get into the college football playoff. Wear the crown. But there's no way that they can close out this season 3-0 and as the league champs in the best league. It's NFL Division II. I mean, it's, it, it's a minor league of the NFL. And they win it. And they beat Alabama, Georgia, Arkansas on the road. Florida on the road, the, 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 the wins that they have, there's no way that they can be left out. Now, there is a way, obviously, right? Because there's human beings talking about this behind closed doors, which you don't really know what the criteria is. We don't have an agenda, a checklist of the things that they go down and say, well, this matters more than that. We got to make sure and account for this. How do they do again? There's nothing that says this is the rule sheet of what they're following. Just a bunch of people behind closed doors saying what they think should happen and what can pull in the most ad dollars. I, I don't know what ultimately will happen, but it's going to be tough, in my opinion, to leave out an SEC champion LSU with a resume of what they will have on that Sunday morning if they beat Georgia the first Saturday in December in Atlanta. I, I just, I don't see a way how that can happen. Um, I would love to get Reese Davis on. Mm -hmm. I, I, I really Reece would Davis. because, I mean, he, he's great for this medium right now because he's so emotional, right? Like, I mean, like you could probably get Reese into some, into some corners right now where he would try to fight his way out of it in true Alabama fashion. Every Alabama fan is so emotional right now. We listened to Paul Feinbaum driving into the game yesterday. Oh, how great is and that? I mean, the how ones that, that are calling in trying to figure out how Alabama can, can get, get in, in there. I mean, it's un and Paul's like, yeah, go ahead. Let's hear this. Let's hear like your rationale. Well, Paul, that. shit. I don't Paul, know. I here's figured what's going to happen. <laughs> George's going to blow LSU <laughs> out. I mean, it's unbelievable <laughs> to listen to it. It's and so then great. Alabama gets, they should get a chance at the SEC. We beat Georgia show. last year <laughs> in the game. <laughs> We got 17 <laughs> titles. I mean, it's like, Paul, let us in. Oh, right. come on. <laughs> they do, it is, this is probably the earliest they've been out the playoff discussion, right? Got to be. Since its inception. That's yeah, why. absolutely. Because mm -hmm. in 2010 yeah. was the last time they lost two games before the SEC mm -hmm. championship, I believe. So they're, Reese Davis is over there just hand wringing <laughs> because he's like, I don't really want to be here right now. Imagine if he went to Tennessee and, he, and it was, if, if, if Alabama was in the same spot that Tennessee was in. You'd be seeing the real gump come out where mm -hmm. it's, I just don't understand how Bama's not going to get in. <laughs> they get in every year. Exactly. We have to. You got Best team in the country. You tell me they're not top four even with two losses? Hunter Hall from Tuscaloosa oh, sorry, in Hunter. the chat. Oh, we are a top 15 basketball. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. A top 15 basketball team. Baseball's coming up. That's good, man. I mean, it just. Golf team's good. Um, I, I thought last night was a little embarrassing for Reese Davis. I mean, you know, look, and there's going to be those types of nights when you're on national television all the time. There's going to be some nights that you're not as proud of well, as others. He knew what was coming. Um, but that was. That was, a, that was a tough spot for Reese. I mean, it, it looked like, you know, I mean, somebody had stole his ball at the park and, like, ran away with it. I mean, he was melting no on national TV over this. I mean, <laughs> I mean his, his rationale and his making sure that we knew what he thought and why LSU shouldn't be in was true Tide fashion. I mean, I couldn't have been more proud of Alabama's fan base than watching <laughs> Their mouthpiece last night, Reese Davis just sit up there and gump his way 
through a nationally televised broadcast. Oh, man. He has made some friends in Tennessee, though. <laughs> oh, I bet. Uh, yeah, Tennessee Twitter is high on the Which, which, which in Alabama, in Tuscaloosa, <laughs> is like, that's, that's, that's almost like death. You know what I mean? Like, they hate Tennessee. Yeah. You know what I mean? For, uh, you screw them old volunteers. <laughs> They think they're good once since 1998. <laughs> hadn't heard from Tennessee. Rocky Top. But yeah, it's Rocky Topology quote tweeted him. It's all, this is a Reese Davis quote. It's not like they slipped past him. They beat them since on their home field. Reese Davis talking on Tennessee and LSU. LSU can get in, but not before Tennessee, says Reese Davis. So he's really pumping. Oh, he's in, bro. I mean, yeah, this like, is his, if you saw it last he night. He has planted his flag in I this mean, arena. Mm -hmm. It will be three more weeks of Reese Davis just <laughs> holding LSU back. and Flag flying for Tennessee. I guess this does matter in the sense of if Reese Davis is out there, this is where he wants to plant his flag, and then you genuinely get a conversation around LSU shouldn't be in instead of Tennessee. This is how that happens. Like, if you wonder where there's a world where – how do you not put the SEC champion in? It's when you have talking heads like this that are constantly being yeah. the message into people that tune in to only listen to this. Like they love the national broadcast. They want to hear, they respect Reese Davis, mm -hmm. created his job. His opinion seems to be one that is obviously slanted in a certain direction, but people hear it enough. You start believing it. And it's, right. it, it, it kind of, that's how you unspool a narrative. I was, uh, I, I was with, um, this past weekend, we were with a group of buddies at, at the deer camp, and one of them lives in Tuscaloosa now. He married a girl from Tuscaloosa and lives mm -hmm. in Tuscaloosa. That's shocking. Um, and <laughs> they lived together before that. <laughs> we go to the family reunions together. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, he, he is—he um, does a lot of work for the university um, in construction over there. And he's not really as big of a, a football or sports fan. Um, you know, as, as we are, but, you know, just being around it every single day, he hears people talking about it and hears what people are saying. And he, he has mentioned, and, you know, he has said, he's like, dude, I'm telling you, Alabama people are, they're worried about LSU now, mm -hmm. you know, like they are, they're intimidated by LSU because they've almost got, you know, the way that they look at Kelly is that, you know, they've got Saban 12 years ago, you know what I mean? Like he's, a little younger, two ships passing. In yeah, the night. just a little younger than Saban is, and 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 kind of was exactly what Saban was to Alabama is to what Kelly is to LSU modern day of somebody that can come in and see like this thing's a monster. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like this you thing, move, move a couple pieces this around. Thing is, <laughs> this thing is a huge monster that if you can just kind of like get it wrangled in and get it under some direction and get it, you know, kind of pointed in the right direction. No telling how many you can rip off around here. So, um, you know, and in year one, the message that is being sent to the rest of the league by going to Atlanta and doing it with what, you know, I mean, we can, we can talk to Brody about this, but I was listening to football and grits, the podcast that he hosts on the athletic talking about sec, um, and, and they said the same thing earlier this week on Monday morning when I was listening to it of, you know, this is this is what people think to be Brian Kelly's worst worst roster. You know, I mean, that's that's it's bad language for the current roster because it's no disrespect. It's a really good roster. It's a it's a roster that has pros. It's a roster that, um, you know, is is competing at a highest level and going to the SEC title game. But for what he's building. And what he's got coming in, you know, two or three years from now, you look at LSU and you'll be like, damn, that first team was pretty good, but it had some holes in it. I mean, the roster needed some filling. And compared to where the roster will be, you know, two years from now, where it's expected to be deep and, you know, solid in all areas. Um, and it's all guys that he recruited. Right. You know, this is a, I don't want to say like ragtag, but he had to stitch this yeah, crew together. Bag. And for him to get the, I think it goes back to him just getting the buy-in. From him being able to get this team to where they are, mm -hmm. from where it started and how it looked, and for him to be like, look, we're good. Mm -hmm. It's got to get you all to believe that we're good. And then for everybody to have, you see, whether it be Jane Daniels get better, Harold Perkins explodes on this team, now you get some momentum, you beat Alabama, and it's this thing is rolling in the right direction. If you saw LSU Gold last night, that's, that's kind of what he was <laughs> preaching. He's like, look, guys, we're here. We're good. Like, you could stop thinking about, you know, the what ifs or what's going to happen this year. It's like, we're halfway through it. We're almost done, and look where we are. It's like, you don't forget the journey. He was talking about, like, climbing a mountain or whatever. He's like, because as soon How as you think you? you're at the top, you can slip. 
Yeah. But right now, he's like, enjoy the climb because we're climbing. Uh, we are brought to you daily by Barker Brothers Plumbing and Works. Remember, Barker Brothers Plumbing and Works, proud supporter here of the Jordy Colada Show. Get in touch with him by dialing up Jude Barker. He is the owner of the company. You can dial straight to his pocket at uh, 225-776-2431. 225-776-2431. Mention the Jordy Colada Show. Save yourself 15%. Number one in a number two business, Barker Brothers Plumbing and Works. Get in touch with them today. Proud supporter here of the Jordy Collada Show. We'll be back with Jacques Doucette of WAFB talking more about the last night's ranking and where LSU is, uh, what he expects from LSU this weekend uh, with UAB coming in. Jordy Collada Show, driving on, uh, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet. Looking to book a dumpster, but no idea how? We've made it quick and easy for you. Check out our website at moralesrolloffs.com. Let Morales Rolloffs know your desired delivery date and finally, provide your contact details. To make payment, look out for an email invoice with all your booking details. On delivery day, our driver will notify you through text and email that your dumpster is ready and on the way. Now you know how easy and convenient it is. Call Morales Roloffs at 225-427-0000 for your dumpster. Hey, Baton Rouge, when traveling through Natchez, Mississippi, whether you need to fill up your vehicle or your belly, stop by GoMart and On The Go Deli. GoMart has clean restrooms, community coffee, an awesome beer cave, and a great selection of anything you might need on your trip. So stop by GoMart at 4 Sergeant Prentice Drive as you're entering Natchez on the left and visit Tom and Wright Granning and their awesome team at GoMart. Don't let the name fool you. Men's Total Health has offerings for the ladies too. Guys, is your wife or partner suffering from urinary incontinence, low sexual desire, or pain during sex? Then the O-Shot might be for her. Don't let it scare you. It's totally natural. It's PRP. And Mike Roach and the crew at Men's Total Health will make you as comfortable as you can be. Contact me for more information, katie at jordycoladashow.com, and I'm happy to tell you everything that Men's Total Health has to offer for the ladies. Do you suffer from chronic dehydration? Are you looking to improve your athletic performance and you need to get over and see our friends over at GoFlow IV? They're located on Jefferson Highway. Easy to find them online at geauxflowiv.com. Make sure and use the promo code Jordy Colada Show. If you do, they'll take 15% off of your initial visit. Check them out online, geauxflowiv.com. Hey, Baton Rouge, when traveling through Natchez, Mississippi, whether you need to fill up your vehicle or your belly, stop by GoMart and On The Go Deli. GoMart has clean restrooms, community coffee, an awesome beer cave, and a great selection of anything you might need on your trip. So stop by GoMart at 4 Sergeant Prentice Drive as you're entering Natchez on the left, and visit Tom and Wright Granning and their awesome team at GoMart. We've seen the BK Takeover stuff. <laughs> from from LSU yeah. and, and social media and um, really in his short time in Baton Rouge, there's been a lot of people embracing his mm -hmm. his, his approach to, to building this roster. What's it like to recruit alongside him? Oh, it's been it's been great. Coach has been awesome to me because he lets me you know lets me be myself when it comes to recruiting, when it comes to, to coaching. He lets his coaches coach, lets his coaches recruit. So I have no complaints on that on that end. And when I need him to get in touch with a kid, he's there for me. Um, the communication line has been has been great. He's just been nothing but supportive.
Here to the Jordy Collada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet Live on this Wednesday. We have looked forward to our Wednesday shows because we got a couple of Wednesday regulars, including Jacques, who has uh, come through in the entire football season. It's been fun to chat with him throughout the middle of the week. And then Brody will be here at 8 a.m. And, of course, taking your phone calls, your voicemails, your uh, text messages, and your chats inside of the, uh, inside of the chat here uh, on the Jordy Collada Show. But Jacques is with us here. Uh, on uh, on this Wednesday. Jacques, good morning. How are you, buddy? Good morning. SEC West champs going to Atlanta. Unreal. I saw you yesterday in the press conference, and the first thing you asked me when I saw you is you're going to Atlanta. And, I mean, I had to kind of almost, like, sit here. We got three, two weeks left of the regular season, and LSU's already stamped their ticket to to, to represent the West here in Brian Kelly's first season. I mean, Jacques, you, you've been there since day one. Um, how... How, how, how about this story? I mean, how, how big is this story? What, what do you think this story is going to be ultimately when we look back on it in a couple of years and say, wow, I mean, Kelly came in here, yeah. 38 scholarship players, first year he's in the West, you know, he's, he's in Atlanta. I think it's going to be about guys getting on board, about getting uh, part of the transition, buying in with the new head coach. You heard Kelly on Monday reference Micah Baskerville, like it's a guy who – when I came here, I heard he was a knucklehead. He didn't go to class. He didn't do this and that. He's gotten on board and graduated and been a leader on the team. Um, you know, certainly guys that were part of that Texas Bowl last year had to look around and, and say, I came here to be part of things like 2019, not, you know, getting whipped by right. Kansas State Absolutely. in an empty stadium in Houston. <clears throat> so uh, I think one thing he talked about all along was he wanted guys who wanted to be here. Uh, when they attack the transfer portal and whatnot. And what's made, what's been different this year than last year, obviously, besides the wins and losses, has been, you know, you haven't had – the guys that have gotten injured, they've rehabbed and they've come back. There hasn't been the uh, – the I don't speak anything to existence, like talking yeah. about a no-hitter or no <laughs> whatnot, but you haven't had the opting out and stuff like that. What did a lot of people say after LSU lost to Florida State? Kayshawn's out of here in three games. He, he's not going to be – and he's kind of reinvented himself, you know, like there haven't been the 60, 70 yard touchdowns, but he's made a lot of tough catches across the middle. He made the biggest catch on Saturday at Arkansas, the yep. 26 yarder that set up Josh uh, Williams touchdown. And, you know, he's made a lot of tough catches in traffic. So I just think it's uh, the, the coaching has resonated. And obviously, Brian Kelly is at the top of it, but the staff beneath him, uh, you know, it's amazing when you get it, go through an LSU football program. And you look at the staff and you look at this machine of people, you know, that's like 10 people across and five down, all that from nutrition to strength and conditioning. It's, it's a machine. It takes a lot of people to make this happen. So it, it, it's a fun team. It, it is ironic. I think the last time we were at SEC Media Days was in 2018 in Atlanta. The last time was in Atlanta. They were picked fifth in the West and they won 10 games and they won a Fiesta Bowl. Uh, this team is similar, but they've obviously, you know, gone a step further in the fact that they beat Alabama at home and they're, going to be in the SEC championship. But like that team, they're going to have a chance to play in a very nice bowl game no matter what it appears, and uh, and, and they've surprised a lot of people. Um, you're also a great reference for this in the in the history of how much LSU football you watched. How good is Harold Perkins? And how, how much – have you ever seen a freshman that's comparable to the impact that he makes? Um uh, it, it, it definitely the biggest defensive impact since Tyron Matthew, and that goes back a decade, over a decade. I mean, Tyron's last year was in 2011, right? Yep. So, uh, no, I, I mean, it's got to be maddening for opposing offenses when they're trying to pass protect, and this 40 keeps flying in left and right and, and wrecking our plays. Uh, sat down with Mason Taylor yesterday, courtesy of uh, Gordon McKernan, and uh, he talked about, I'm sitting on the bench and I'm watching, oh, Mason just made, uh, uh, Harold just made a play. Well, Harold makes another play the next play. I mean, he was amazed sitting there watching it from the sidelines. So, yeah, LSU's offense was in the deep freeze uh, at Arkansas and and couldn't get a first down to run out the clock and, you know, only scored one touchdown. And Harold Perkins, uh, watching it, that last play on the field, I thought it was an incomplete pass, but the the replay clearly showed it was a fumble. And so, yeah, I mean, he, he kind of saved him. Survive in advance, thanks to Harold Perkins. Absolutely. Josh Williams is another story on this team that I think deserves a lot of a, a lot of spotlight or at least to have his story told because of the perseverance he showed of just sticking with the game. But now here he is playing and, and the primary back for LSU chasing an SEC title. What have, what have you made of, of covering him the last five years? Uh, I watched the interview I did, we did with Brian Kelly 
and I and we were talking about running backs. This is back in May, and talking about running back by committee. And I think he said something like, "The most valuable reps are the guys that w- guys want to get the third down reps because that's when the blocking comes into play and everything." And Josh Williams has encompassed all of that. John Emery probably has the most electric stuff. We saw that when he got hit in the backfield against Auburn and somehow got in the end zone. We saw that the cutback against Alabama, and he's made a lot of big plays for LSU. Uh, Josh Williams just really encompasses uh, everything um, and and the blocking and just a great story. I know his family sometimes gets a little sensitive about the walk-on tag and they feel like he could have been a scholarship player at Houston and some other places, but he was a walk-on here and um, he has done a tremendous job I, I at work. You know, there's some mothers at work who have kids that are coming up and being – uh, athletes, and when I tell them this guy's a 3.5 student, he's been on the dean's list. He's got, they're like, that's that's great. You know, they they like to hear that kind of stuff because mm-hmm. I think a lot of parents don't want their kids just invested in sports, and sports is the only way I can go. I think he's a great example also for uh, you know doing things outside of football as well. And I think he's got his parents told me that if he graduate, he is going to graduate. He's going to have two years left of eligibility, so that'd be what? that'd be interesting. Yeah, be interesting if he decides to go pro or not. Right. But, uh, yeah, he's been a tremendous story and just everything wow. you want in a young man on your team. You asked Kelly um, a couple of weeks ago about Walker Howard and just his development. Do you yeah, expect- my apologies on that. But, uh, <laughs> no, I mean, it was just uh, – Do you expect to see him this weekend? Yeah, I, that's a good – I haven't even thought about that. Um, the, the spread is interesting. It is. 14 and a half, it LSU's is. favorite. I mean, it is. that could mean, you know, a, a one-touchdown game in the fourth quarter and we punch one across and win by 14. But – uh, I mean, yeah, he, he hasn't played, uh, so they could play him a lot and he wouldn't lose a red shirt. So that's a, that's a good point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd like to see it for yeah. sure. You know, I, I would also like to see, you know, certainly you don't want to think that LSU took a step back with 86 yards passing sure. and that Georgia has got a blueprint to, you know, kick your butt in Atlanta. So, uh, you know, these last two games are very important. You want to go 10 and two. Jordy, I was looking it up. I don't think outside of the 2019 team, LSU has won 10 games in the regular season since 2011. I think, yeah, I think it was like yeah. – I'm not talking about winning a bowl game and then winning 10. I'm talking about winning 10 I in the regular season. it was 2012. Season. Yeah. They, I, think they, it, it was, I think it's been 10 years. You're right, t- 2012, because they lost to Clemson and they finished 10-3. and three. Right. Now, a couple times they had a, a game canceled. Sure. McNeese got canceled. They would have won that one. And then I think the, the, the big Joe Oliva tiff with Florida, the, the mm-hmm. 2016 hurricane, they lost to Western Kentucky, I think, or somebody. They lost that game. Right. But but they haven't won ten games in the regular season outside of 2019 since 2012. So. And I think that's a great stat to orchestrate and to illustrate of why Brian Kelly is here, right? Because LSU, think about that. I mean, in that 20 year run where they had a gap of nearly 10 years of winning 10 games, they were the best team maybe ever put together in the sport. So you kind of get blinded by they struggled for the last six or seven years, but even before that, they go to the game in 11, they win one and seven, win one and three, but it's just been the up and down roller coaster of, you can win a natty, but you might have a tough season to get to 10 wins too. So, I mean, Brian Kelly has been in here, has been brought in here to kind of do exactly what he's doing right now. I had a conversation with Kobe De La Husse, a former yeah. LSU kicker who made the field goal in the swamp to beat the Gators in 14, yeah, that's right. That's right. the 50-yarder that week when LSU went to the swamp. I talked to him. And we were sitting around talking. He goes, man, in 2016, we were loaded. We were loaded. We had Kendall Beckwith coming back. We had Tredavious White. Look at the defense. Arden Key in his prime. Devon Gottschall. Uh, Jamal Adams. Jamal Adams. I mean, all these guys on defense. And they somehow lost four games that year. Yeah. And I think they had – that was the one time I went to the NFL draft and covered it in person. It was in Philadelphia. I think LSU had three first-round draft picks. Jamal – Leonard. Tr- Tredavious Leonard. and Leonard. And it's like, how would you guys lose four games this year? You know? And so they, it, it was that kind of thing where the talent was minimized to a Texas Bowl or a Music City Bowl or whatever right. it was towards the end there. And so now, yeah. I mean, um, uh, it, it's very exciting. I mean, we vid- Miles uh, Frazier was part of the interviews last night. He's got two years left, you know, as well. And just talking about, you know, Will Campbell and Emory Jones and Mason Taylor and Harold Perkins and all these young talent. And then now with the transfer portal, how many people are going to get out of the transfer portal now that they're doing this? Right. So it's exciting. It is. It's a good time right now to be an LSU football fan. I mean, it feels like the stock daily is just soaring um, through 
through the ceiling. Um, you sat down with Mason Taylor. What a freshman year. I mean, of all these freshmen that have come in and contributed, right? I mean, I think everybody anticipated Campbell. People at some point anticipated Emory Jones to pop. And even Harold Perkins, I think, in the offseason, people knew he was going to make an impact, not to, this, not to this level. Nobody was talking about Mason Taylor. He was almost a necessity to get on the field just because the position had, had, had no manpower there. Now it feels like LSU's got a bona fide tight end. Yeah, I, I think when we back went to camp in August, you would hear kind of Brian Kelly start to say, now this Mason Taylor, you know, we're going to have to we have to play this guy. You know, he, yeah. he, he's that good. And uh, his journey, you know, from the first game of the year where he catches the ball across the middle and has the wits to get out of bounds and not try to run over these guys to get the touchdown. He sets up Jeray Jenkins' touchdown at the end. And then he has, as he said, a missed assignment on the extra point. And he's crouched down after the game looking around like, how did we, you know, we just lost, you know, to catching the two-point conversion against Alabama, yeah. one of the biggest catches in LSU history, one of the biggest moments in LSU history, a true freshman. I, I asked him, how do you not think about the enormity of that pass coming your way, you know, and it's a muscle, muscle memory. We practice it. Why not catch it in the game? And, you know, and it was his mom's moment after the game. His dad has been talked about a lot, and rightfully so, but – after the Alabama game, when, when he and his mother were in tears, that was her moment and a great moment, and so many people enjoyed that. And so it was also funny that, you know, we're, we're so football dummies. Like, Darren and I have been talking about that play they ran to beat Alabama. It was the same play they ran against Ole Miss. It was in the same end zone, the rollout. Uh -huh. He goes, no, it's completely different. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was 14 personnel, four tight ends. This All was right. blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, well, you know, yeah. it was a rollout, and you threw it to the tight end. It's the same play. Yeah, no, right. no, nice try, exactly. TV guy. Yeah, nice, nice try, TV yeah, guy. Right. So, uh, exactly. But, yeah, a, a great story, great kid. How cold was it last Saturday? Uh, we woke up. It was in the 20s. Disgusting. Uh and they kicked off the game, and it was 35. It was bearable. I've been up there a lot worse. The worst it was that I experienced was in 2014. Mm -hmm. That was the week after. Was that, that was the night game, wasn't it? Night game, oh, yes. It looked so miserable. Yeah. That was the week after LSU should have beat Alabama at home. The, when Kendall Beckwith got the recovery and Vidal Alexander, yeah. they lost in overtime, and they go up to Arkansas. And mm. I think Leonard Fournette had like five carries, nine carries for or seven carries for nine yards or something. Uh, they get shut out. Arkansas had a 17-game SEC uh, losing streak. The fans rushed the field. That's right. Uh, I talked to the That's traveling right. Tigers. They said, typically, we'd have a bigger plane. We had like this small plane uh, in the fourth quarter. that We all looked around. You guys ready to go? Yeah, let's go. And then they all left. Wow. And it, it Chad was a, Morris. It was, uh, that was Brett Bielema. It was Bielema. It, Bielema was the head coach. I yeah. remember that because yeah. – he talked about the boot, like, you know, there's some women that come up here and look at that thing and faint, you know, like, <laughs> like it was this great, you know, thing, like boot, man, we all talk about that boot, you know, and so that's always the thing when you go up there too, when you watch the local TV, there are, they are so, this is our biggest home game of the year and, and no, we want to beat LSU more than anybody else. And it's always been hard to counter that for LSU. And it's always after the Alabama game. It is just a tricky, tricky game. Yeah. And it was, it was pretty miserable. And uh, I mean, the weather was... The weather, I don't think, had an impact on the game. It was sunny, and the and they had figured out their ice on the <laughs> on the field. And they looked like broken glass all on the sideline when they finally got it off. But we were walking back to the hotel carrying our gear, and some Arkansas fan goes, "What do y'all think about that game?" And Darren goes, "It was awful." <laughs> and it's like you're right, you know. <laughs> the overwhelming theme of the day was great: SEC champs heading to Atlanta. But that game, yeah, these two the teams, hell, let's get the hell out of here. Yeah, these two teams, two years in a row, have played a couple of oof. Have you had a chance to see McMahon's team play LSU basketball? Uh, I watched their highlights on YouTube um, from the Arkansas State game. It looked like uh, Ace Wolf uh, had a big game there. Uh, Josh – Adam Miller, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, had a big game the last time out. Uh, I watched some of Kim Mulkey on Sunday. That game was on TV. So, uh, yeah, I do want to go watch. I've been so caught up in football. I had not really got a chance to see him in person yet, but – I like to i know every year wafb does a postseason special a 30-minute special when the tigers make it to atlanta what is uh have you started production I, planning i thought we were doing one uh as of now i don't think we're doing one now you know maybe those sales people have a conversation around the say oh maybe we should do one of those but <laughs> right. from my understanding there's not a whole lot that's gonna be going on in atlanta with lsu i think there's like a thursday media availability on a zoom and that's it wow so uh, I think maybe they're doing some stuff with the SEC network and stuff. But typically, I thought, okay, we go to a press conference with the two head coaches. They stand there next to the trophy. And 
But apparently that's not taking place. So I don't think LSU's getting to Atlanta until Friday. So there's not a whole lot going on there. How do you see the power shifting in the SEC right now? Do you feel it kind of the continent's moving as, as the power? I mean, it seems like Georgia's sitting at the top of the hill right now and has, has planted their flag and is going to stay there for a minute. But yeah. you know, what do you, what, when you see the West, what do you see? Well, I think it'll be a very interesting offseason for Nick Saban. He, he's lost. They lost two games. Now, look, they got beat on a field goal at the gun. that got deflected at the line and barely made it over the goal post. And they got beat on a two-point conversion. Both times the teams, the fans rushed the field and everything. And so I don't want to, you know, it, I think I've learned from history. Every time somebody starts saying Nick Saban's getting too old and they're going downhill, he comes back and he knocks your teeth out. But he is 71 years old, and some of the changes – uh, I think he's doing his best to go along with some of the changes in college football, but I think they've taken a toll. But, yeah, I think, I think Kirby right now, Kirby's in his sixth or seventh year at Georgia. It's funny to look back. You remember his first year they almost lost to Nickel State yeah. in overtime? That's right. Or at home? Yeah, that was um, uh, uh, the former uh, Rummel quarterback. What was his name? Um, was, it, was it 4K? 4K, yeah. Chase 4K. Chase 4K. Lutcher had a guy on defense for Nichols. I'm sorry I forgot his name, but he was great. But, yeah, they almost lost to Nichols. So that shows you how, I mean, building programs and whatnot. And so he's got that thing up and running, and I think they're kind of the kings right now. Tennessee's coming up. It kind of brings you back to – remember in the 90s, the SEC East was kind yeah. of the yeah. – you know, you had Florida in their prime. You had Tennessee with Peyton Manning, and Georgia was kind of the third. Uh, and then the West was kind of eh at yeah. that time. But, uh, but yeah, I, I think that, uh, that, that Brian Kelly – and what he has done right away sends a big message. But uh, it'll be, Alabama's going to have an interesting offseason. It's clear that the fans hate these two coordinators that they have, uh, Bill O'Brien and uh, the, the uh, Golding. Golding. Yeah. Pete Golding on defense. From so. Hammond. He's from, he's from Hammond? He's from Hammond. Really? Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that. I know. Okay. Well. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so it'll be interesting to see if he, you know, makes some changes there or whatever. But. Do you anticipate major overhaul? Changes for, for Kelly's staff? I mean, maybe guys being picked up for, for other jobs. I know that Cortez Hankton's name's popped up for a, a, a job over in Florida. I mean, what I heard the other day was uh, they better find a way to pay Matt House. Yeah. Uh, that, that people are going to be coming after him. And, uh, you know, I interviewed Matt Malk after the Alabama game, and he said, look, I said, he goes, I know that two-point conversion was big and all that. He said, the defense, to me, is the story. You know, the defense keeping LSU in, in, a, in a lot of these games. Obviously, this past week, you scored 13 points and you win yeah. somehow. So, I think Matt House's stock has really gone up. So, I agree. Uh, in fact, last night I named a, a finalist for the Broyles Award. That's right. Uh, as one of the top assistant coaches in college football. Um, all right, Jock, off today? Yeah, you can't, you can't tell. Uh, <laughs> no, no. Uh, I'm going over to Gordon's office again. And uh, we're supposed to chat with a couple more LSU players. We'll get that up today. But, uh, yeah, uh, tomorrow and Thursday. And then uh, Friday, man, it's going to be a second round of the high school playoffs. And uh, it's going to be a cold one. Uh, we're in the deep freeze here with these unseasonable conditions. But uh, we'll have sports on Friday night for you. And uh, LSU and UAB over the weekend. I think the Saints have a home game against the Rams. Uh, I, I'm so – I don't want to use the word disgusted, but kind of just <laughs> disgusted. Their schedule has been – very, th their Easy. record, yeah. I mean, like, they, it's been set up for them. Yeah. It's, they're tough to watch, Jacques. I mean, I'm, I'm almost at a point where you knew you had to go through this point because of how much emphasis they put on winning in the last couple of years that Peyton and Breeze were there. I mean, the more that they were pushing and kicking the can back, right? Like, they were in such a win-now mode, which I said the other day while I was thinking about the Saints, how much I appreciated at the time. Right, I remember being in the middle of it, being like, "Screw 2022. We'll get there when we have to get there. Win now, you know." And they just Nola no called, and Minnesota miracled their way kind of oh. out of Super Bowl opportunities. And here you are, kind of paying the piper for those those days. Yeah. Really, I remember all the criticism for Drew Brees in 2020. I, I would take I would take a lot of those 29 out of 39, 291, three touchdown games from Drew Brees that they were getting and. 2020. I mean, even him at the end when he was limping to the finish line was was giving them you know something. Mm -hmm. But the quarter, yeah, the quarterback situation is so like, who are we playing? Who's what's the future? What are we doing here? And Dennis Allen. I mean, you know, you don't want to jump on a guy too quick, but but it's almost like the 
uh, I don't know, like Ed Ogeron to an extent where, okay, Ed Ogeron is bad at Ole Miss, but if we pair him with LSU, yeah. it, it'll be good. Okay, Dennis Allen, he was bad, but that's the Raiders. He'll be fine here as the head coach of the Saints, but then it's, okay, is he the overall issue here and not where he was at? And so He seems very, like, apathetic. You know, like, he seems very, like— Checked out. Uh, I, guess. I, I I have a, 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 a former uh, co-worker. Her name is Farah, and she tweeted something great the other day. She goes— uh, he's way too nonchalant in his post-game press conferences. I want his Sunday ruined just like mine. Yeah, right. I <laughs> mean, know? well, I mean, like, remember Peyton? Peyton was more pissed off about losing than anybody. Yeah. I mean, even when they won ugly, Peyton was pissed. Yeah. Like, that's what I appreciated about him was that the fact that he was going to, he was steaming the whole plane ride home. He was steaming the whole car ride back to the facility. They were going to get it right. And Allen's got none of the... He, he's, he's, you know, Ogeron's a great comparison because how, how tiresome did it get of Ogeron? It's on me. I got to fix it. You know, yeah. Allen's got these, these canned responses of, yeah, we got to get in there and we got to coach it up. You know, it's like, come on, man. Like, yeah. how? Why? Well, like, what's going what's gonna to change? You know, like, are you pissed off that it's not working? Do you think they make a change after one year? Uh, I, hmm. I'm not in that as much as, you know, the Mike Triplets and Jeff Duncans of the world and Fletcher Mackles. I'd have to ask them a little bit. I, there was this room. I was told by a media person at one of the Saints home games this year that Peyton, there's talk that Peyton would come back. Oof, like, don't tease me. Like he would recharge his batteries for one year. That's what he wanted to do. And he was going to maybe come back the, the following year. But I don't see him doing that if he doesn't have a quarterback. So, um, you know, I, I, to your point about Peyton, you know, I just remember sometimes I would time the post game. Pre- I'm like, how how long was he up there? Three minutes? Like after a loss? <laughs> you know, the one I always remember. Questions? They, None. Uh, Thanks. See ya. He, he would squint like this. <laughs> you know, and there was that one game. There was that one game. They went to Detroit, and they they went for it on fourth down or something. And Sal Palantonio, they lost. And Sal Palantonio was uh, was asking about why didn't you punt? Ooh. And Peyton was like. <laughs> Three and a half minutes left and three timeouts. That's like seven and a half minutes. <laughs> Next question. Next smart question. And then you hear Sal to flip the field. To flip the field. You know. So. <laughs> yeah, <pal. laughs> Next question. Next question. And he would always like where, if the question came from here, where he would just like reflex turn in the opposite direction. You know. To flip you know. the field. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> yeah, that, that was the – yeah, Peyton, man. After a, I thought Peyton was great, like off-season, training yeah. camp, blah, blah, blah. He the was Pro-Am. Very, yeah. The Pro-Am golf tournament. He was <laughs> awesome. <laughs> very personable. The, before the NFC Championship game in 19, he sat out there and talked to us for like an hour. I was like, man, this is the best he has ever been before they got shafted by the uh-huh. Rams. But, uh, yeah, I mean, after a loss, that was – oh, it, was, it was rough. He was, it was like kind of must watch. Yeah, it was tough to be in the room, but it was always fun to go back and watch. Yeah. Who had the balls to ask the question? Sal. Sal Powell. <laughs> to flip the field. <laughs> Next the question. Matchup. All right, buddy. Good to see you. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, we'll be back more of the Jordy Collada Show, driven and powered uh, by Ghost Chevrolet. Remember, speaking of New Orleans, Katie, tell them about your restaurant in New Orleans. Katie's in New Orleans in Mid City. They've got St. Louis style pizza. Yes, they do. <laughs> and all kinds of other things on the menu. I'm going to taste the pizza. <laughs> I really got to get that pizza. Also, their sister restaurant, Francesca's. Get there in Katie's in Mid City for lunch or dinner. Um, can you order online there? I think you I can. You can do too. everything online. Katie's in Mid is the uh, website. Katie's in Mid If you're planning on heading towards New Orleans and want to stop in for a great New Orleans meal, stop in and see Katie's in Mid City. You can find out the menu online. Katie's in Mid Good stuff from Jacques. We'll talk to Brody here in 12 minutes and get back to LSU football, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet here on the, Go- on the uh, Jordy Collada Show. Glass and Body, the trusted name in frame, body, and automotive paint repair since 1977. They have served their customers for over 45 years. You can find them online at dgbauto.com or stop in and see them Railroad Avenue and Division Street out in Donaldsonville, Louisiana. Look, they can help you with your insurance claims. They can make the repair process as stress-free as possible. I'm speaking from experience here. I've got numerous windshields, body repair, all done by Kenny and the crew over at Donaldsonville Glass and Body. They are, without question, the most well-equipped shop in the area. Stop in and see them today. Shop them online, dgbauto.com, or stop in and see the crew over 
Kroger and Division Street in Donaldsonville, Louisiana. Donaldsonville Glass and Bottle. Hey, fellas, it's Jordy Collada for my friends over at Men's Total Health. Guys, do you suffer from fatigue, decreased libido, erectile dysfunction, weight gain or loss, loss of muscle mass, signs of depression, anxiety, hair loss, mental fog, general loss of interest, then you might be suffering from low testosterone. Go see my friend Mike Roach and his great team over at Men's Total Health over in Metairie at menstotalhealth.net online and stop in and see how they can change your life today. A simple shot and some knowledge from Mike Roach can get you back up, moving with your energy, get your sex drive back, build your muscle mass, make you feel young again. All online, menstotalhealth.net. Red Stick Sports, a local staple in Baton Rouge to all sports fans, was founded back in 1981 and has remained a family business for over 40 years. Today, they still have the great selection on the floor, but they're also a leader in custom apparel for businesses, sports teams, and other groups. Take it from us, everybody over here at FM Digital Media. They help us out with all of our apparel. Let them help you out today. Go ask for Cody over at Red Stick Sports. Check him out online at redsticksports.biz. I was embarrassed about my smile. Are you unhappy at yours? Do you not smile back at yourself? I called my friend, Dr. Spillers, over at Johnson Spillers. He fixed my smile, and now everywhere I go, people are complimenting it after the work that Dr. Spillers and the staff did to my mouth. They can do it to yours. Get in touch with them. JohnsonSpillers.com. Two locations, one in Gonzales, one in Baton Rouge. Easy to find them. JohnsonSpillers.com. We love the crew over at Fresh Chef Kitchen. Chef Shane and his crew dropping off the meals every Monday here to FM Digital Media, whether it's breakfast, lunch, dinner. Me or the crew's going through our meals over at Fresh Chef Kitchen. Their weekly pre-order freshly made meals, or you can walk into the cooler over there on Airline Highway. They have that fresh, same service over there at Fresh Chef Eats. FreshChefEats.com is where you can find them online. Fresh Chef Kitchen. Tell them you heard it right here on the Jordy Colada Show. Are you looking for sound financial advice? Then get in touch with Daniel Newman of Edward Jones. You can call him today at 225-261-8262 or email him daniel.newman at edwardjones.com. If you're planning for retirement, saving for college, for children or grandchildren, or just looking for sound investment opportunities, get in touch with Daniel today, 225-261-8262, located on Magnolia Square Drive in Central. Daniel Newman of Edward Jones. All right, welcome back here to the Jordy Colada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet, live here on this Wednesday. Appreciate you stopping in and beginning your Wednesday here with us. Make sure you hit that like button, share button, comment button, as daily we are brought to you by RMB Builders. Remember, uh, remember our friends, Rhett Bourgeois and his crew. If you are uh, designing a home, if you are building a home, if you need some reconstruction done around the house or office, get in touch with RMB rmb-builders.com and remember to hit them on instagram rmb-builders give them a like follow on instagram you can keep up with all the projects there but if you just are uh, following rmb on instagram you'll keep up with uh, all of the reels all of the uh, all of the videos that they're putting out for projects that they have going on so check them out there we mentioned it a little bit with Jacques uh, as lsu last night the college football playoff committee announced the top 25 and the tigers are uh, coming in at number six on the latest 
uh, Tuesday ranking. Some other announcements yesterday uh, around LSU was defensive coordinator Matt House was named to the Broyles Award uh, as a, uh, a nominee. He was uh, a finalist uh, as uh, it is presented annually to the top assistant coaches in college football. There were 51 coaches named as finalists last night uh, for the award, and Matt House was one of them off of LSU staff. Jaden Daniels, LSU quarterback, was named a semifinalist for the Davey O'Brien Award. That was selected out of 21 players, so 21 players are semifinalists for the 2022 Davey O'Brien, which is presented annually to the nation's best quarterback. Um, so it is uh, coming down the stretch here of the college football season uh, and seeing uh, LSU starting to get some recognition for their play on the field of some postseason award possibilities for guys like Matt House, their defensive coordinator, and Jaden Daniels, their quarterback, who have played really well here. Uh, I would expect more awards for this team coming down um, here as you'll start to see individual uh, position awards start having finalists. You know, for instance, the Butkus Award, which goes to the top linebacker every season in college football. I'd imagine LSU would probably have two finalists on that list. This is still the expanded finalist list. As we said, Broyles was, uh, excuse me, House was one of 51 semifinalists on the, uh, you know, on the on the trim down of, of the semifinalist, and Daniels was one of 21. You'll start to see some of the, 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 the big numbers coming out as far as teams, or excuse me, individuals that are being recognized for specific positions. Uh, you know, I mean, like, how in the hell is Harold Perkins going to be left out of the discussion for the Butkus Award that goes to the nation's top linebacker, right? I mean, like, there's nobody playing at that position at that level week in, week out like LSU's got one, right? And if there is somebody that could be, you know, one of 15, one of 20 finalists, Micah Baskerville would be one too as far as that position goes. Um, you know, I mean, think about the freshman All-American awards that LSU's going to receive this year. I can't see a scenario where – Emory Jones, Will Campbell, Mason Taylor, and Harold Perkins aren't all on um, freshman All-American lists, probably first-team All-American list, all of them. Um, so you'll start to see a lot of awards, all SEC awards start to come out uh, for this the, the, this LSU team and what they've uh, accomplished here. Not it's, You know, it's, it's not all done, and there's still work, uh, you know, that, that, that has to be done as far as uh, getting to the ultimate spot for for where LSU will land here uh, in 2022, but you'll start to see some of the recognition uh, for this team uh, starting to pop up now uh, over the next couple of weeks. Can you believe it's our last home game? On I cannot. Saturday? It's crazy how fast football so season fast. goes. So um, fast. And, and I guess the games are really what makes it fly by yeah. because you've got these mile markers mm -hmm. each week mm -hmm. to kind of get to. Uh, and it really, I mean, it's just a, it, it's a testament of how fast time goes. I mean, that you're like, it felt like, I mean, we were just talking about the summertime, what our, our plan was going to be in football season. And here we are going into the final home game of the year with LSU only having two left on the schedule. It's crazy. It really is. How just fast it goes. Shit. I got a little trivia for the last UAB game. Hit me. I think the last time the they Blazers. met was 2013. That's right. That's when Odell. They are the uh, That's when Odell brought back the the missed field goal. Oh, that was my trivia. Sorry. That's okay. I'm sorry. I was trying to give you a little background. <laughs> I was trying to give you a little background. That's okay. Game. You me blew fly. it. I can actually I can actually go a little deeper. I can actually go a little deeper if you'd I, like. Okay. Oh, so, find a nickel. Uh, the, the yeah, right. Was that I'm one, Italian, so yeah, I mean. <laughs> You got a couple of more. Uh, all right. Well, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. forget it. Forget it. Forget it. Um, I'll go back to 2000. Nick Saban's first year. Okay. At LSU. Saban and LSU were setting up a humongous mm. nationally televised game against Tennessee on a Saturday night in Saban's first year. The week before, they've got UAB in town and they lose on the last drive of the game. It what turned out to be Josh Booty's death blow to the quarterback spot. Who were they playing? They were playing UAB. Okay. LSU's one and one against UAB in the history of the in the history of the of the matchup, and their one loss was to Nick Saban. Uh, excuse me. LSU's one loss was with Nick Saban as the head coach the week before. They beat Tennessee on national television. I mean, the Tennessee game is recognized. 
as Saban's first big win at LSU. Like, that was the night that LeBron and Tofield broke out. They won in overtime. Rohan started. Rohan went crazy. I mean, like, it was, it was awesome. Rohan hit Robert Royal in overtime to win the game. Josh Reed went nuts that night. I mean, it was just a magical night in Tiger Stadium. The week before that, Josh Booty threw a pick six on the last offensive drive against UAB right in front of Saban. I'm telling you, the guy <laughs> caught the ball right in front of the, the, in front of the LSU sideline and Saban standing right there, and they bring it back to the house and beat LSU. And LSU loses that game. 13-10, to 10, and that was homecoming. It was homecoming oh, that, that night. Sucks. And there was a it cry is. for Roe throughout that night and throughout the week that was just, it was like it, people were done with Josh Booty. Mm. That was the end of Josh Booty. LSU's offense up to that point was a lot like the offenses that, you know, LSU has seen here for, you know, a decade plus. It was just, it was... It was like watching grass grow. It was like watching paint dry. I mean, it was so boring. And Jimbo Fisher was the play caller. Oh, wow. He was the offensive coordinator. And then they put Rowe in the next week against Tennessee. And I want to say, like, on the, the first play of the game, Rowe, like, rolls out. And he's not known for his running. But he, like, spins out of a, of a sack and, like, looks like an elephant running down the field. And picks up like 40 yards and like two plays later, he hits Josh Reed and they score and they go, the place goes mad. I mean, the place goes crazy. And then him, Josh Reed, LeBrandon Tofield, Robert Royal, I mean, these guys just go nuts that night and put on an offensive Clinic. explosion, man. And they win in overtime. The fans storm the field. Next thing you know, I mean, it's LSU's off and running, man. It was, uh, it, it was, it was. I, that week in Baton Rouge, I specifically remember because I was working with Jimmy Ott, and Ott was the local. You know, at that time, Ott was the anything. I was the king of the mountain yeah. at that time, man. I mean, like he did an afternoon call-in show, and it was like you know, I mean, it was like kind of like a local Louisiana fine bomb. I mean, everybody would he would have stacked callers <laughs> for two hours. Mike from Plaquemin, Big E. Catfish. Oh. I mean, like all of these. All those people, people are man. still around, no doubt. Biggie, Biggie's passed. God rest his soul. Roscoe has passed. Yep. God rest his soul. But I think like Mike, Mike, Mike from, from Plaquemine calls into Buddy Sanji's. Catfish was the one. Yes. Catfish was the caller that would have this like. He had this like alternative personality that he like would go into would call in and it was oh mr jimmy yacht <laughs> i mean it was it was so funny but they were calling for booty's head that week after that uab game oh they and wanted row bro went on to beat number 11 tennessee and number 13 mississippi state right after that absolutely yeah. no lsu got they caught they went on fire they, yeah, they, they caught clearly. fire and then that is uh obviously uh, row got row got a little banged up and they put Josh Booty back in and started the Peach Bowl. And then they put Roe in at halftime of the Peach Bowl. And they came back and won the game against Georgia Tech. And the next year, they won the league. 2001, they won the SEC. Uh, went to the Sugar Bowl. Two years later, the national champs. Um, so The path, the path, the path. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it kind of all stacks up. All right, we're going to talk to Brody Miller here in a couple of uh, seconds as we'll get back to LSU. We'll get Brody's remarks on... Uh, LSU finishing number six last night in the latest college football playoff poll. Katie, real quick, tell them about Dead Soxy. Ooh, Dead Soxy, you have a few more days to get in and use the code Jordy and save 40% off instead of the 13% off that they originally promised us based on that Arkansas score. So go to Dead Soxy, S O X Y dot com, get your Christmas gifts. You can order corporate gifts in bulk. Dead Soxy, S O X Y dot com, use the code Jordy for 40% off. Um, Brody Miller from The Athletic next. Be so lucky. In a wreck, Gordon McKernan Injury Attorneys is ready to go to work for you. Come meet your team. I'm your intake specialist. I coordinate your case and connect you with your attorney and paralegal. That's us, your legal team. Hello. Hello. Thanks. And we'll fight to get you every dollar you deserve. I'm your settlements and disbursement manager, and I'm here to get you paid on time. I'm attorney Gordon McKernan. Put our team to work today. 
Just call it. We're sitting in the dugout. So funny you say that. And Pelfrey is not pitching today, but he had like he's in full uni, like he's like turfs, and he's standing up on like the uh, like the like First the step. fence, like whatever, just like this, watching the game, and we start talking about you know pissing your pants, like something like whatever. And he was like, I'll piss my pants right now. We're wearing, <laughs> no way. <laughs> we're wearing gray pants, long gray pants. He goes, I'll piss my pants right now. <laughs> no, you won't. Yeah, how much money you give me? So we gathered up, like, however many people were in there. I think it ended up being, like, $2,000 total. Like, oh, I pissed my pants for $2,000. And 100%. So he goes in there, and he's watching the game, and he just starts pissing in his pants. It's gray pants. Yeah. So you see it going down his pants. It's long pants going into his turfs. <laughs> and he's just going into his turfs. He takes his turfs out and dumps out the pee outside on the, on the, on the warning track, on the dugout. And he just puts them back on, and he finishes the inning. He waits till the inning is over with to leave. And so he's watching the whole inning with piss in his pants, and everybody is dying laughing. Manager's laughing. Everybody's laughing. He gets up out of it and walks to the dugout, pee all in his pants, in the gray pants. It was the most – it was awesome. I remember telling them, hey, listen, I, my job here is to make sure that we bring, you know – Big time football to to a small town environment, right? And and so you see on 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 um, you know movies sometimes about the way a, a town reacts to the football program and and uh, what it means to everybody. And and that was the, the hopes and dreams that I had for the place. And so uh, our kids um, take a, a distinct responsibility in wearing that Z on their helmet. Uh, it means a lot to them. Uh, and then uh, on the flip side of that. Uh, our community does a tremendous job of supporting our program, supporting the athletic department, supporting our school as a whole. Uh, and there, there's really a great relationship there that's a lot of fun to be a part of. Thank you for the access, man. Looking forward to tonight. We'll talk soon. Coach, wait, before you go, fix your hair again one more time. <laughs> oh, look oh, at let's him. Let's go yes. here. Look at him. What do you think about that? Game day, what baby. What do you think about that? Game day. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. I yeah. love it. I love it, man. Great yeah. to see you. Thank you. All right, remember our friend Brody Miller over at The Athletic as he is covering LSU over there. He's here every Wednesday. You can follow him on Twitter at Brody A. Miller to keep up with the latest. In fact, he's got his mailbag segment over at The Athletic today. You can get in uh, if you're over on his Twitter account. You can get your mailbag questions in concerning uh, LSU um, as they are uh, getting uh, reacting last night to LSU becoming uh, ranked at number six in the latest college football playoff. With UAB on the horizon this weekend, Brody is back with us here on this Wednesday morning. Brody, good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. I always appreciate your uh, your little support of the athletic, getting mailbag references right, out right. there. Right. You're a team player. That's right. Checks check should be in the mail, correct? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Six figures, Thank man. You, you know that. Yeah. Yeah, no. um, we've got we've, we we have uh, we've got agreements, Brody. Uh, Brody, your reaction last night, number six, LSU. Yeah, I guess in a lot of ways, kind of as you'd expect, but it it's gonna get, start getting interesting, right? I obviously, if everything goes chalk, LSU's not going to the college football playoff, and I assume everyone plans on that. But first off, just being six is kind of I don't know, like actually being in that six spot's just jarring. Like this is no longer a fringe good team. This is a actual you know contender, and it starts getting really interesting. Of like, hey. Personally, I, I love this TCU team. I think they deserve to be where they are. I do have a gut feeling they lose either to Baylor or in the Big 12 title game. So let's say hypothetically TCU loses. And I genuinely think USC loses to either UCLA. I think there's, they should be a dog against UCLA. Yeah. And they play Notre Dame, who's figuring a lot of stuff out. It's like I genuinely think they lose one of these last two to three. And it's like all of a sudden if that happens and LSU – hypothetically does beat Georgia, which I don't think any of us expect. But if they do, it's like, are we actually looking at a three team, uh, three SEC team playoff? Like that is genuinely in the cards now. That, Like in that scenario, it comes down to either do they put both Ohio State and Michigan in or three SEC teams? So, and I know this is all far-fetched yeah. and kind of extreme, but it's just kind of crazy how the roadmap is there for a team that just a month ago felt like they were really struggling. 
Yeah, no, I agree, man. It, it is wild to even say out loud. It's wilder to say out loud that LSU has secured their Western Division championship <laughs> with a couple of weeks left here in the regular season, Brody. I mean, I guess this would be very similar to the answer you just gave me, but I mean, here we are and, 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 and where, where we have been in discussing this team and now they're the league champs on the Western Division side. W what do you make of that story? Yeah, it's it's I think it's worth like taking a step back, right? I'm sure you've done this plenty on the show too of like I, I'm curious your thoughts on this, but twenty nineteen is such like a meteor that like mm -hmm. it doesn't even feel like it's baked into like the actual like year to year what is LSU football. Like it is just its own bizarre holy crap, that's the best team ever kind of thing that just came together perfectly and I mean, enjoy the heck out of that. But like it doesn't even feel part of the last 12 years of LSU football in right. a lot of ways. And so when you, if you like view it that way, and I know a lot of LSU fans who do, a few commenters in the athletic do, if you do, it's like LSU hasn't won the West since 2011, other than 19. LSU hasn't won 10 games in a regular season since 12, other than 2019, which kind of broke my brain because in our head, we always think of LSU as this top 10, 15 team, and they are, and they, and they have been. But like putting that context in and realizing, wait, if LSU takes care of business, this will be their best non-2019 regular season in 11 years or wow. 10 years. And I think it is really worth kind of enjoying that and stepping back because this is rare. And I think what uh, famed athletic commenter Catherine B put so well, I think after the Bama win was like, because 2019 was such a meteor, that Bama win and this West title, you know, that feels more gratifying to a lot of fans because it feels more grounded in reality. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. not like that's fake, but you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, it's earned. It's like, it's not, hey, you had this one great team. It's like, you were just better than them. You just figured it out and found a way to beat Bama and all that without like your perfect team. So. And it's going to be the worst Kelly team, in theory, that it will have. I mean, yeah, but I just think it's worth kind of taking that moment in. Yeah, I was going to ask you, what do you think the message to the league is that LSU is sending? I mean, kind of, not, not that you're in every market, but I mean, if, you, if you're if you out there, I mean, you're thinking, wow, LSU really got it right, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think the general vibe of most fan bases I've gathered is kind of just like, okay, it's been this long-term thing, right? It's like, okay, if Brian Kelly gets that going, you know, that's going to be really interesting, but I wonder. And now you're just kind of, I think the most people across the country are like, okay, it's time to really take notice. It's time to really be like this team's going to, I don't know. And I think it's even more worth focusing for a lot of fan bases, I think, on the recruiting class. You know, it's like, first off, this season is incredible and it does kind of show you like, man, he can really make out of a lot out of not that much. But then to be like, Okay, but how's recruiting going to do? And now to be, wait, it's number four class in the country. There is a genuine roadmap to landing two more top 50 corners and finishing like second or third in the country. And it's like, no, I, there, no part of me thought they had any chance of landing a class that good, you know, with Brian Kelly, let alone year one. And I think that's where it's like, oh crap, they might actually have an ability to really get this thing rolling. And <laughs> you wiped up my mailbag. One of the best questions I got this week is like, what's the reasonable expectation of, what LSU should be post Saban. Hmm. And I think it's such an interesting discussion. I yeah. haven't figured out my exact answer, but like the roadmap is there that I am not saying you should be what Georgia is now. That's probably unfair. But like post Saban, the roadmap is there that LSU should be consistently the top two teams in the West going to the playoff, I don't know, every two to three years. And that's that's success, I think, to Scott Woodward and LSU, right? Yeah, without question. I think you're right. Um, Matt House, do you get an idea of what, what his ceiling is, uh, what his personal – does he want to get back to the NFL and be a defensive coordinator there, or does he want to be a head coach ultimately? Because it seems like he's kind of controlling his destiny right now. Yeah, his stock could not be higher, right? And, and his resume, his CV is so good because he does have, you know, multiple chip boxes checked. He's proven that he can do it at a not smaller, but less, you know, talented place at UK. Now he's proving he can do it here. And he has a, the NFL experience of being like, hey, I know that world. It's not going to be new to me, all that. I don't, I will not pretend I have insight to what his literal thinking is, but I do think there's a lot of guys that when you are a football guy, you do kind of want to maybe sometimes be in the NFL. And there, I mean, it was reported. Mark Stoops spoke openly about it when he left after that great 17th season that, like, you know, some guys don't want to just, like, live that nonstop recruiting life and that be your whole life. So I'm just speculating, and I hate even throwing this out there, sure. but it's just like, yeah, I mean, I, want, I wonder if he got some great NFL DC offer. That might be a happier life for him. And it's too early to probably play that game, and I don't want to, like, put words in his mouth, but I could totally see that. Like, Joe Brady's not a – 
a, a stat similar of a comp for him, but like that line of thinking is just, it's more normal than people realize. Uh, you have covered a lot of LSU football. You've seen a lot of great players. Where does Harold Perkins' performance last Saturday rank, and what do we do now with him? I mean, how is he viewed? Is he a legit, like, I mean, is he the best defensive player in college football? Is he in that discussion? I mean, <laughs> we're getting there, man. Right? It's it wild. Like it. It's it's tricky. Well, first, I mean, first off, where do you go with him? You play him at running back too. I mean, what are you doing? You, you've seen punch. the stats in high school, um, but yeah, I, I I'm not going to go as far as calling him like one of the two or three best players just at this moment, just because like there is the fact that like if he he's not quite ready to do like all of the mental stuff yeah. yet, you know, that's baked into it. But if you're talking just literal ability to make an impact right now. Yeah, I mean, shoot, it's, I think Jalen Carter is the best defensive player. I think that's fair. Is Harold Perkins second? I mean, in, in terms of just literal impact right now, is Harold Perkins first? It's crazy. And I am glad that I believe Cobble asked it, or was it Moscone, I forget, and or and Kelly gave a great inside answer of, like, what Perkins was able to do was also because Roy, yeah. Ojolari, you know, all those guys, you know, were able to flush the, uh, Makai Wingo, flush them out, play so well, and then it sets it up. And it's almost like, and that got me thinking, like, man, do they, this is common sense, but they win that Florida State game with Harold Perkins, right? Because so. what was the problem with that game? They got a great pass rush against Florida State. They actually did. They just couldn't bring Travis down. It's like, oh, wait, Perkins is literally like a robot built to just finish a good pass rush almost. Like he's like that third line of defense that just can win any situation. And yeah, his upside is scary. I mean, I, I, I prompted the poll question, I think you did too, of like, where does he rank in the LSU defense, you know, freshman? Mm -hmm. And it's like, I don't know, because Stingley was borderline perfect. Yeah. Like Stingley was the best corner in college football as a freshman. And it wasn't just like, you just do this. It was, he was covering the best receiver on every team, but his wasn't as flashy. I mean, Tyron Matthews, I think his freshman year is so, his sophomore year is so special. People mm -hmm. forget how good his freshman year is. Mm -hmm. I don't know the answer. And I guess who cares, but it's, it's jarring just how much, he is a of, of a different planet. I mean, he is literally what he does does not feel comparable to who he's up against. Should there be concern of the blueprint that Barry Odom put out on Saturday of LSU's offense? It looked like that will probably be what they run into for the rest of the year. It's possible. Yeah, I don't think anyone's going to go like full throttle like that. And also, I always say it's one thing to be able to like say you want to do that. What Odom did was also complicated too. Uh -huh. like it was it wasn't just I'm dropping eight and they yeah, go beat me because if that's what it was, Jane Daniels could go run or else you could just pound the ball and run for 300 yards. It was a really smart scheme. At Barry Odom, I mean, shoot, there's a reason LSU wanted to hire him in 21. Like Barry Odom's the best, and he was really good at like okay, I'm only rushing three, but I have like they had like two QB spies and Poole and, and and Sanders like both waiting for him, but you're also cutting off the shallow end. It was kind of like House against Mississippi State. We're like you're dropping eight, but you're also sending pressure and all the time. So you, there's no like tendency to hone in on. So I say all that to say, like, I don't know if it's just as simple as here's what yeah. Barry Odom did. Yeah. Let's do it. But yes, like I think that's valid that what is the one thing that's the we're 10 weeks in fair to criticize Jane Daniels is sometimes he gets indecisive sometimes and clogging passing lanes is seems like the best way to do that. But you also are leaving up the opening of if you do that too much, he can run for 250 yards alone on you. So yeah. you have to be smart enough to put it all together. You have to have the D-line personnel to put it all together. So I think Georgia probably in a lot of ways is like a terrible, terrible matchup for LSU's offense. And it is for everyone. But like that could be a nightmare. But yeah, I'm really interested to see what A&M wants to do against LSU because, you know, A&M's defense is not what you'd expect it to be. But do they try to do something similar? What have you made of covering Josh Williams and the player that he has turned into and the yeah. responsibility he has now on this team? It looks like they count on him in very high-pressure situations, and he is he, he is rewarding them a, a lot. Yeah, I mean, I, I've mentioned this before, but I always go back to, like, when uh, Kyle Kasky last in yeah. early 2021, yeah, and he before the season even started, I remember him saying, like, that guy's an NFL running back. I don't know why, like, they don't want to play him more. And shout out to him because he kind of nailed that. And it's it's like and i have a story coming out on this in the next week or so of like he, he got on the field because he was a great pass protector he was the guy they could trust and by the way that kelly gave such a good answer on like what all goes into that and why that's more complicated than just can you block a guy and here and that's why john emery wasn't on the field early in his career there's so many guys like that that you think you just are some star running back and there's more that goes into it but what you give josh williams credit for is like he is way more than that 
even the first like five weeks, it felt like he was the short yardage guy. He was the guy. It's like you need to convert a third and two. He's gonna inch your way to it. Mm-hmm. And now, man, each week it's like he breaks another twenty five yard run. He he makes three guys miss in a way you didn't expect before. He is a complete running back. And to your point of like what he means to the team, there's a reason he is the one guarantee to come talk to the media like every single mm-hmm. post game and most like Tuesdays. They bring him because he's the guy, and you've covered a lot of guys like this. There's always the one guy you want to like talk to about the team. Yeah. You know, it's not just like the running back stuff. It's like, what's going on with uh, Jaden? What's going on with Kayshawn? Like the defense. Like he can just talk about that all, and that's that's probably who he is in the locker room too. So he is the oh man. It's like I don't know. Like talking MVP stuff. Who cares? It's exhausting. But like in a lot of ways, he is the under underrated MVP of this entire season. I agree wholeheartedly. What do you make of the week, this weekend, the line? This is a funky number, yeah. and it's UAB coming into town with LSU favored by two scores here. Um, you know, I, I was asking Jacques in hour number one if he anticipated seeing Walker Howard with that point spread. That would be a, a overwhelming no. Um, yeah. what, what do you think of this Saturday? Yeah, it's a tricky line, right? Because, yeah, 14 and a half I think I've seen. And, like, I think it's worth remembering that last week did remind us as much as this mm-hmm. season is incredible yeah. – this LSU team, even though they're number six and they've earned it, because there's a difference between earned, but also like that's why I love predictive analytics. It's like, yeah, you've earned to be number six. It doesn't mean you're actually the sixth best team in reality. Like they're two different things. And like LSU is a flawed team. They proved that. Like Jaden Daniels isn't there yet. This offense isn't there yet. There's a lot of stuff that's still getting figured out. So like, and by the way, that's a good thing. Like that should yeah. be more impressive to what the season is. Enjoy that. Like this team isn't that amazing yet. And they're still doing all this. But yeah, like this, they are vulnerable and UAB is better than a lot of people realize. Like I know Bill Clark's not there anymore and he's been such a good coach for so long, but it's still kind of Bill Clark's team and they are tough. They don't make mistakes. They have a really good offensive scheme. I think they're like, number two nationally in rushing explosiveness like those big running plays on the ground you know kelly talked about their great running back it's a game lsu should win by two or three scores yes i do but i do not think this will be a blowout one because lsu hasn't really proven they can be like that i just go take care of business and win by 35 team they're not and two uab is better than people realize and you're kind of not look ahead it's not trap but just like this isn't an SEC game. It's easy not to get up for it. So there's a lot of reasons to kind of, I don't know. I wouldn't bet. I'm not saying I'd bet UAB, but I also would not be laying 14 and a half. You alluded to it a little bit earlier in the conversation. I'll get you out of here on this one. Um, the, the game is going to happen. It's weeks away, but LSU is going to go to Atlanta and face Georgia. Um, it feels like it's going to be a steep, steep mountain to climb for LSU to overcome yeah. that. Um, what, what, what is, what, what, how do you see that game? What's the percentage chances that LSU can – can really Ooh. compete there percentage who that's tough like it's i think on the lsu offense for george defense it's just probably going to be a tough game and like george's defense does that to everyone and lsu's offense has made such growth but they're still a work in progress and it's tough like okay lsu's o-line deserves so much credit they've yeah. become good they lose that battle to George's D-line. No disrespect to them. You'd probably do. And, you know, Jaden, who's the def- – we saw Georgia against Tennessee. It was the only team in the country able to, like, match up with those receivers and just, like, actually win those battles. Well, they're going to be able to do that against LSU. They're going to be able to neutralize Jane Daniels with their absurd athleticism and strength on the line and all that. So I really don't like it on that side. I think LSU's best chance, like, if you want to put it in, like, the 20% zone, is – I, LSU's D can match up. Like Georgia's offense isn't some exotic thing. Like it's kind of body to body a little bit. It's do your job, and, and LSU's defense has proven capable of doing that. So I think their chance is to kind of muddy this game up, you know, to make it a tough, maybe like the first three quarters of the Bama game, right? Like a tough, ugly, gritty game, and then you're in it, and you have Jane Daniels in a fourth quarter. I think that's your best chance. Brody, have a good rest of the week, man. Thanks for the information as always. Thanks as always, guys. Take care. Brody Miller checking in from The Athletic. Make sure and subscribe today. If you have not subscribed, you can follow him on Twitter, at Brody A. Miller, to keep up with all of what's coming out there uh, over at The Athletic. We'll be back with more of the Jordy Collada Show, driven and powered by Ghost Chevrolet. We're going to take your voicemail. We're going to take your phone calls. We're going to take your questions. Jump inside of the chat. Blow up the phone number. Leave a voicemail. Shoot a text in. 225-229-7741. Your question's next here on the Jordy Collada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet.
Looking to book a dumpster but no idea how? We've made it quick and easy for you. Check out our website at moralesrolloffs.com. Let Morales Roloffs know your desired delivery date and finally, provide your contact details. To make payment, look out for an email invoice with all your booking details. On delivery day, our driver will notify you through text and email that your dumpster is ready and on the way. Now you know how easy and convenient it is. Call Morales Roloffs at 225-427-0000 for your dumpster. Hey, Baton Rouge, when traveling through Natchez, Mississippi, whether you need to fill up your vehicle or your belly, stop by GoMart and On The Go Deli. GoMart has clean restrooms, community coffee, an awesome beer cave, and a great selection of anything you might need on your trip. So stop by GoMart at 4 Sergeant Prentice Drive as you're entering Natchez on the left, and visit Tom and Wright Granning and their awesome team at GoMart. Don't let the name fool you. Men's Total Health has offerings for the ladies, too. Guys, is your wife or partner suffering from urinary incontinence, low sexual desire, or pain during sex? Then the O-Shot might be for her. Don't let it scare you. It's totally natural. It's PRP. And Mike Roach and the crew at Men's Total Health will make you as comfortable as you can be. Contact me for more information, katie at jordycoladashow.com, and I'm happy to tell you everything that men's total health has to offer for the ladies do you suffer from chronic dehydration are you looking to improve your athletic performance and you need to get over and see our friends over at go flow iv they're located on jefferson highway easy to find them online at g-e-a-u-x flow iv.com make sure and use the promo code jordy colada show if you do they'll take 15 percent off of your initial visit check them out online g-e-a-u-x flow iv.com southern eye center is located at 6859 jefferson highway right here in baton rouge has been serving your eyes for over 40 years in the capital region they offer friendly service in a helpful environment with the highest level of personal care to manage your eye health and vision needs if you want more information log online to southern eyecenters.com that is southern eyecenters.com stop in and check out their beautiful office located on jefferson highway right here in the capital city and remember each time you walk in there and you mention the Jordy Collada Show, Dr. Ann Shaw and Southern Eye Centers will take 25% off of their fantastic selection of sunglasses. All you got to do is mention the Jordy Collada Show. Check them out, southerneyecenters.com and located at 6859 Jefferson Highway. Looking to book a dumpster but no idea how? We've made it quick and easy for you. Check out our website at moralesrolloffs.com. Let Morales Roloffs know your desired delivery date and finally, provide your contact details. To make payment, look out for an email invoice with all your booking details. On delivery day, our driver will notify you through text and email that your dumpster is ready and on the way. Now you know how easy and convenient it is. Call Morales Roloffs at 225-427 Zero, 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 zero for your dumpster. We're all from different places and backgrounds. We've each experienced our own versions of life, but in the end, we're all on the same team. I'm part of that team, along with these players in purple and gold. Kayshawn Buddha, Malik Neighbors, Miles Frazier, Kyra Lacey, Barry Brooks. Whether on the field or in the courtroom, your team matters. To join our team, make a difference. Bet, let's get it done. Hey, Baton Rouge, when traveling through Natchez, Mississippi, whether you need to fill up your vehicle or your belly, stop by GoMart and On The Go Deli. GoMart has clean restrooms, community coffee, an awesome beer cave, and a great selection of anything you might need on your trip. So stop by GoMart at 4 Sergeant Prentice Drive as you're entering Natchez on the left, and visit Tom and Wright Granning and their awesome team.
All right, welcome back here to the Jordy Colada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet. Your voicemails, your questions, your comments coming up here as uh, we get into the second hour of this Wednesday. Make sure and hit that like button, share button, comment button if you don't mind. If you have not subscribed to the show, surpass 13,000 subscribers. Thanks to you all out there for subscribing and following and staying in tune with what we have going on over here. We greatly appreciate all of you for being out there every single day. Make sure and hit that like button for us. Yeah, share we're getting button. Getting ratioed comment. on the likes, you know. It's one yeah, to right. five to one over here. I sure hope if y'all are watching, y'all are subscribed. Though. I mean, come on. Subscribe's good. Thirteen K. We can. We can. I mean, really, you can, can hit that with. down. That down thumb too. Uh, I mean, no, you don't we hit don't the like. That. We just like the interaction. I don't want the down right? thumb. Um, the up thumb. But you can't be picky. You can't be picky. <laughs> no. I can. Thumbs up. <laughs> they need the middle thumb, just Thumbs like this show is okay. Oh. You know, just right, the, the Caesar right, thumb. Right. Mm. Maybe. Mm. I'll be it's back fine. tomorrow. I yeah. Don't know yet. <laughs> this, this segment, the rest of the show depends on them. Uh, uh, voicemails? Voicemails, yes. Lizzie, so, how are we looking over there? It is out of our hands. We are good. Uh, are we ready to get to the first one here? Yes, we are. All right. Answer the phone if Cordell calls okay. us so we can For tell sure. him happy birthday. Happy birthday, Cordell. <laughs> happy birthday, Cordell. Um, we have two from Thursday, one from yesterday, and one from today. Do you want me right. to start yeah, on let's Thursday? Yeah, let's start Thursday. All right. And this is, I believe, from our own Coach Caskey, <laughs> if it's in Ohio. Jordy, yep. Lady Lloyd, Stewie, Caskey from Baton Rouge. <laughs> I just wanted my voice to come on your show and just, you know, have, y'all, have to have y'all hear me and think, <laughs> man, that dude is cool. You hear my, even my kids talking to y'all yeah. right now. Always a baby in the Finally, a hey, cool Lloyd, Caskey that we can listen to. needs to be mowed in my house, so I'll see you later this afternoon <laughs> over at the Citizens Bank event. All right, bro. I'll see y'all later. <laughs> that was from last Thursday. Thank you, Coach Caskey. Coach Caskey called in. Hi, this is... Oh, well, I don't think we want to talk to old Jade. All right, here we go. What? Oh, uh, they butt <laughs> guys. Mm. Let's see if we can get him in trouble. I know. I Robert love Durst. I love that. Of course I killed him. <laughs> <laughs> I promise I won't tell. Yeah. All right, that was no good. Busted. Okay. Here we have one from Homa. Hey, guys. This is David from Homer. I uh, got some things that maybe you'll want to think about. The first game of the season, Florida State, within the first two or three plays, we lose our number one defensive player. I'm sure that affected the team in some way. I mean, your number one guy goes down in the start of the game. Oh, it's Cordell. Mm -hmm. Yes. Have to answer. (laughs) Happy birthday, big dog. Happy oh. birthday, Cordell. Appreciate it. <laughs> Cordell, happy birthday, bro. You're 30. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate 30, y'all. 30. I what feel are you it doing too. for it? I'm coming down there. But, That's right, uh, this weekend. Yeah, but today I'm I'm not doing shit. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Good for you, bro. This is my only phone call for the day. Good for you, man. I love it. I just got I just got done carpooling. I'm going home and sit my ass down. Good for you. <laughs> Atta boy. Crack one, roll one. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Think of a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I appreciate y'all. We hope you have a good day. Yes, sir. All right, I do. Holler Thank when you, you get Cordell. in town. Holler when you get in town. We'll look up. Absolutely. All right. Um, any text messages over there, Liz? Bye. Happy birthday. Let's see. We still have the rest of this voicemail from Oh, yeah, we were oh, yeah that's right. That's right. That's right. Best player going down on defense. Hey, yeah. guys, this? this is David from, from kickoff. He goes to the hospital. They don't even know if he's going to walk again. <laughs> There's all kinds of speculation going on. If you don't think that will affect the young football team, I mean, like they, got a lot, they had a lot to overcome. <laughs> then, before the Tennessee game, you lose your best offensive lineman to a to – a, uh, a dehydration problem. On kickoff, you lose your wide receiver, Jack Bess, to a fumble, and he's out for a couple of weeks. I mean, they've had a lot. Talk about a slow start. They've had a lot to overcome and think about as a young football team. And for Kelly to get them in the position that they're in right now, it ain't remarkable. It's a, it's a, it's almost a, it's almost a miracle. So I want you all to think about that. Thank you. I'll think about it. Let's think about it. I thought about it. Dave? Dave. Dave from Homa? Uh, no, Dave, look, I, I think you, you bring up really good points. You know, I mean, think about if they'd have gone for two at the end of that Florida State game. 
right? I mean, like, there, there, there's so many what-ifs on this team, but all of them, they have overcome and put themselves into a position where they're SEC Western Division champs. And, look, I think it's a direct line to the coaching. I don't think that the coaching deserves all of the credit. I think the players deserve a ton of credit for what they're doing and what they're taking on and learning and executing on the practice field and bringing it over to Saturdays and executing on the game field. I mean, all of that stuff deserves a ton of credit for the, the people that are, that, are help, you know, that are making that happen. But I think the direction and the leadership and you know, just the organization of the program ha- has really boosted the talent on the field, right? I mean, like it's been able to help them out so, so much of having a plan, of sticking to nutrition, of being accountable, of you know, being a good teammate, to getting your workouts in, to being on class on time, to all of the stuff that Kelly has been preaching. And we've heard his team talk about when they've come through here in the offseason. His assistant coaches were here during the offseason. A lot of his players have been here throughout the season. I mean, they're still continuing to harp on the principles of what the program is being built on, and it's the little things. I mean, really, it's the little things that matter that, you know, are forming trust. Like Kelly said last week, I don't know, Lloyd, if you can pull this, if you still have the shot sheet from it, but I believe it was the opening line of Kelly's press conference earlier this week of learning how to win. You know, it's a mentality. You don't win accidentally. You may win accidentally one or two games. You may throw something in on a you know in a basketball game where you heave a you know a half quarter at the end of the buzzer and may get out of there where you got no business winning. They might, that may happen one night. Consistently, you're not going to win if you don't know how to win. And winning just isn't about making the catch and protecting the ball. Winning's about going to class and you know being accountable and being on time and building trust between the player and the coach, between the player and the player, the teammates of. You know, trusting. Jaden Daniels and Mason Taylor have to trust each other to run that play with one second left on the clock and the game on the line or overtime, right? I mean, there has to be a sense of, hey, man, I've seen you in there working. You know I'm over here working. Let's make this play. We've put ourselves in position to be here. Now let's execute. And all of what Kelly talks about in the decision of going for two there. The trust that that builds between the team and the the coach and the coach and the team and all of the little things that's happening right now for LSU football is, I think, a byproduct of, of, of what's happening Saturday at the end of the game. That's why they're winning. That's why they go, go win in dramatic fashion against Alabama on a Saturday night in Tiger Stadium or they can go beat you in ugly, disgusting, gross fashion in Fayetteville on a Saturday morning. It's it's about the the principles of what's being built and how it is being built. It's being built legit. It's being built sturdy. It's got a base foundation to it that will last. And, you know, I mean, we're witnessing that. It's cool days right now for LSU football fans. I mean, it's it's a fun time to look at the program and seeing it, you know, strengthen up. I mean, it's, it's going through its training program right now, and you're starting to see the benefits of it. You're starting to see late-game wins. You're starting to see, you know, plays being made. I mean, look at what we've seen all season long from LSU football of how good of a second-half team they have been since game one, since Florida State. They dominated the second half, won the fourth quarter, nearly won the game, and since then have done it every Saturday since. They have been the better team in the second half, including Tennessee in the fourth quarter. Now, I know Tennessee was playing prevent. The game was won. They were throwing it around. I'm not, you know, I'm not taking that for granted. But they were still executing and playing at a very high level in a game that they were out of four quarters in. And that's, that's a culture change. That's different. I mean, how many times did we get to this seat after a Saturday in Tiger Stadium and wonder if Ed Ogeron's team quit on him? Or wonder if Ed Ogeron quit on his team? Now we're seeing the, the bonds being tightened, strengthened, and built for future success between both the coach and the players, the program and the team, to where it is it's blooming into. It's fun to look at, man. It's awesome. It's it's. 
it's a really cool thing to be covering. I know for for all the fans out there, it's fun to be a part of. It's something that to, that that you support. It's very prideful to look at the team and see the the the, the coach speak about it and understand like this is man buy stock right now on LSU. You know, I mean that that feels like a team that's going to be trending for a while here, where they're going to be in the discussions of. SEC and college football championships. And, you know, that's what 10 years, $100 million is supposed to buy you. That's what it was intent to buy you, was to buy you a consistent championship contender in college football. And in year one, the return is <laughs> hmm. give, him more re- give him more years. I mean, give him more money. Got a caller on the line. Let's go to it. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Frank, New Orleans. Hey, Frank. Good morning. How are you, man? Pretty good new. I'm right. just enjoying what you're talking about, but concurrently with that, the explosion of volume of joke material for the Aggies. Oh, oh. gosh, Frank. It's almost the fact that too Alabama easy. is completely melting down. Yeah, it's, it's great. I mean, it is, it is a fun time to be at this intersection of the SEC when you look around and see LSU driving one of the fastest cars, and Alabama's got a clunker, A&M's got a clunker. I mean, it's it's... It's incredible to see what's the the shape that's taking in the league right now. Oh, it's just it's 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 nonstop. It's absolutely un- unbelievable right now. Thank you for calling, Frank. Y'all take care. Yeah, man. Thanks for listening. Uh, let's go back to the phone lines. Have a take. Don't suck. What's your name? Where are you calling oh, from? Pontiac, Michigan. He just hung up. Oh no. Pontiac, Michigan. That's, that's a what place. I, saw. I read it quickly. <laughs> Josh Hill will be landing Desmond Ricks. They're sitting in a really good spot for him. They're getting his last official visit. Boylan Kouye, I want Florida State again. So do I. We'll have him. Uh, yeah, but I, that, that's too long away. Mm-hmm. I'd love to play him, like, tonight. <laughs> okay. Here's a voicemail from Jean Lafitte. What's up, Jordy, a.k.a. Pazano? Yeah. <laughs> we got to call this. This is how it always happens. Hold on. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Have a take. Don't suck. Hey, man, it's Dustin Lambert from uh, Gonzales, Louisiana. What's, What's going up, on? Dustin, how you doing, buddy? Good morning. Doing good, man. Good morning. Hey, uh, nobody's really talking about it, but Harold Perkins only played eight plays against Tennessee. Do you see that going a different way if he plays more plays? Are you screwing with me? Are you messing with me? I nearly blew my, I, I nearly blew my head off because he only played eight plays. <laughs> in the, in the uh, stadium I, I club. That. Um, <laughs> yes, in the game. I mean, my, my fiancé nearly left me that day because I was, I was acting about Harold. Um, it's not your son. I, I don't I, look. I, I don't know if the. I think that you know each season there's one outlier, and that's going to be the outlier. And you're going to wonder how the hell did that happen with Harold Perkins? I would love another shot at Tennessee, right? I mean, I think LSU fans would love that. You're not going to get that, but um, that was just. I mean, that thing was from the jump, just never had a chance. And I think with Perkins yeah. on the field, the predominant of the game, he makes a difference. Does he win that game that day? I don't think he does, but to play them straight up four quarters, hell, I'd go to Rocky Top. I'd go to Neyland just to get another atmosphere and another another swing at them. Uh, But 11 eight, I'm not making any excuses. Tennessee won the game, but I I think that Tennessee and LSU, or excuse me, LSU would love to have that one back. And, you know, Harold Perkins not being on the field would be a great, you know, be a great qualifier for it. Yeah, definitely. Appreciate, Appreciate you taking my call, man. Yeah, man. Thanks for listening. Um, have a take, don't suck. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Have a take. Yes, sir. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, Deron Tross, Washington, D.C. Yes, sir. Good morning, Deron. What's on your mind, buddy? Uh, in reference to the you know LSU, we have two games that we need to take care of business before we can start thinking about Georgia. And I think the fans and, and, of course, Georgia are getting ahead of themselves uh, about thinking, you know, if we lose one of those games, no way. That we're going to get in the championship game with three losses. No chance. I agree with you wholeheartedly. No chance at all. Um, do you anticipate them? Do you anticipate them winning both games, though? I'm, I anticipate them winning both games, and we beating Georgia, and we in the national championship. Damn, Deron, yeah. what a story, bro! You better call me back if they do. Thanks for listening, mm-hmm. bro. We'll do it. Thank you for the oysters, my brother. You got it, man. Oh, nice. Thank you. Um. All right. Uh, have a take. Don't suck. What's your name? Where are you calling oh, from? Was they, that they, was it? Was they, it ringing? Yeah, they hung it up. Did you send him oysters? What's up, Jordy? A.K.A. Pazano. This is Clint from the parish. We just got through burning our gun barrels off. We shot uh seventeen ducks and uh twelve trash ducks. Hell yeah. 
Uh, I just got a couple of things. Um, Spoon bill. I got a question for you. Is Harold Perkins eligible to win the Buckus Award being a true freshman? And um, I was wondering why we haven't seen more of Quincy Wiggins, like spot playing, maybe third down, pass rushers. And then the last thing, I I, um, I think we really missed uh, Brian Thomas Jr. I think he's been uh, uh, really our best receiver all year. And um, – it's about all I got, man. Y'all have a great day. Go Tigers. My bro- my birthday is Friday, man, so I've been representing my Jordy for a lot of shit. All the fish have been loving it. <laughs> Y'all take care, shit. man, later. Happy early birthday, Cuzzo. Congratulations like on the ducks. <laughs> Throw the shit ones back, man. What are trash ducks? Uh, I don't be, know. That'd be no a idea. spoon bill. I don't know. Trash yeah. duck. No <laughs> but, you know, uh, I mean, a clip from the parish. If it's I, am, I am not good for the duck blind. No. It is way too cold out here. I can't imagine. I am not like accurate. With this shotgun, I'm yeah. taking this boat. I'm going back to the camp. Well, the How do you start this boat, yeah. by the way? <laughs> where's, the, exactly. where's the wheeler? I mean, those the the the, the engine well, the, the engine back here boats, bro. I'm cutting and it, circles. And it is just the wind chill in the oh. face on the boat. You're like, we're All not going to chase that. a duck. I don't know why people do it. I've oh. never understood it. Good. Never. Can't talk Lord. in there either. I think you can when you duck hunt, right? Yeah, you can, you talk can talk a little bit, but you gotta stay that. down. You gotta, but yeah, like, you have to stay still in oh, there. It depends when, on, they, yeah. when they come I'm over. Out, when dude, they fly I'm cold, over. man. And the the repercussions of just me having a gun. Windy. I would not want to be. Roll I can't think of anywhere here, less. I'd want to be in, in a duck blind with you two with the guns. Yeah, I agree. No, you don't. I mean, I would be. I don't want to be in a duck blind with anybody with me and a gun as well. I mean the whole <laughs> shit. This thing works. The whole setup of it. I mean, you got two no people offense. over here, and then the backside. I'm coming this I way. Know. You know Swinging I mean? around. <laughs> My head's right here. That's the other thing. Your All head over is a spoon right bill. There. A people in the dog. chat that hunt are like, God, y'all are terrible. No doubt. Y'all are embarrassing. No That's fine. Just leave me at the camp. I swear, everything <laughs> will be awesome at yeah. the camp when you get back. Breakfast is ready. Uh, try this. Eat this. <laughs> yes. Drink this. You're not hungry. Like that. Um, all right. Fire's what was ready. what was the uh, what was the um, questions? Harold Perkins is eligible for the Butkus Award. Um, this is not Louisiana high school football. Everybody mm-hmm. can win every award. Everybody plays everybody. Uh, second question was Quincy Wiggins. Quincy Wiggins, good question. Um, Quincy was banged up early in the season. I know that he was set back with a foot injury, uh, ankle injury, I believe. I, I don't know if they're slow playing him or if he's just not ready to go. I see him dressed out. I see him down on the sidelines. Um, but maybe look. One thing about Quincy that we do know is that he did not start playing football until late in his you know kind of athletic life. He didn't I start playing. That. Um, you know, really predominantly football didn't become his sport until his junior season of high school. What did he play? Basketball. Basketball. Right? Yeah. And he was, was a, a baller. total freak. Yeah. Total freak. Um, and, you know, like for a long time, don't forget the lead recruiter for Quincy Wiggins for two years for LSU was Will mm-hmm. Wade. Yeah. Huh. No. I mean, remember that. Uh-huh. I mean, Panamski and Ogeron are blowing Wade up on how to get in touch with Wiggins for nearly two years. Mm-hmm. And then finally they get the deal done at the end and he's on campus, but it's still going to take him time to um, develop into the football player that he has to be to, to play it at, at, at the SEC level. And no matter what he looks like, and he looks like a first-round pick, he looks like Miles Garrett. I mean, he, he looks the part. He's still a baby when it comes to football knowledge. Right. And and look, you can even say that about Harold Perkins, but Harold's played a lot more football in his life than Quincy has. And and not that that gives him. He's playing a different position. They're both freak athletes. They're both guys that you can kind of say, roll the ball out there and just go be you, man. You know what I mean? Like, I don't really have to tell you a lot. Just go run faster and be stronger than everybody else. And for a lot of their life, they've done that. And, you know, I'd imagine Quincy's been wrapped up with, you know, Will Campbell, Miles Frazier, some of these, you know, guys, Garrett Dellinger on a practice field and realized, damn, I mean, like, I'm not the strongest dude here anymore. I learn some moves. Right. Like, I got to learn technique. I got to learn scheme. I got to, I mean, how good is iron sharpening iron of Emory Jones, Will Campbell blocking Quincy Wiggins every day going to be for those guys? I mean, like, they're going to look up six years from now be, you know, exchanging jerseys on an NFL postseason or, ex- you know, on, on a postgame field, you know, realizing, guys, we've been playing one-on-one against each other since we were 18 years old. And now look at all of us. 
we're all all pros. I mean, like, there is benefit that is happening for Quincy Wiggins, all these young guys, every single day of the reps they're getting. Some guys are just ready right now. Some guys aren't. I think Wiggins will be ready at some point. It's just not right now. And then Brian Thomas Jr., I agree with you on Brian Thomas Jr. I think that he needs to be more of a focal point of the offensive game plan. I think he's their best receiver. I think he's the, the, the receiver that can change the scoreboard the fastest. He's the one that you can throw it up to, he can pick it out of the air, and he can run by you. And I anticipate him to have, at some point, like this breakout stretch of games, breakout maybe season next year, or maybe it comes starting Saturday with UAB. But he's a killer. And he is a game changer. And he's one of those dudes that can change the game in one play. He can take a slant 80 or he can jump over you in the red zone. And I love Brian Thomas. And the play he made on Eli Ricks that sprung Jaden Daniels for that touchdown in the overtime is not talked about enough because Josh Williams and Mason Taylor get a lot of love for the blocks that they had in the open field, and they deserve it. The reason why we don't talk about Thomas is because you don't see him. When you pull up that Jaden Daniels play and you see two people wrestling three yards off the sideline and Thomas has Eli Ricks smothered, it looks like he's wrestling his younger brother. I mean, it looks like a couple of young uh, uh, brothers wrestling one another where the older brother is just like laying on the younger brother, like pinning him down. Ricks is like swinging his hands and his legs in the air, like, get off of me, man. It's over. Like, leave me alone. I mean, it is Bully ball. textbook. It is, it's unreal how beautiful that play is from a blocking, running, execution standpoint. And all of, you know, anyone who had an assignment on the field dominated their opponent, dominated the guy in front of them. I mean, like, Brian Thomas, is he like Ricks? I mean, Ricks looks like he's yelling for his mom on the ground. I mean, he looks as if he is being picked mm. on on a schoolyard Terrible playground. Spot to be. It's a bad spot. Got his hands on It's me. a bad spot oh. to come back home and, and, and that happened to you, Eli. I mean, that is a that's a bad moment. But for Brian Thomas, much more of um, you know, highlight of just he gets opportunities and he makes the most of them. Effort. You know what I mean? Like he is a guy that if you grew up around or you're around the Baton Rouge area, if you're from the Baton Rouge area and you saw him play in high school, he was dominant day one, man. I mean, I saw him play in the freshman as a freshman in the state title game as a basketball player, and he was the MVP of the game as a true freshman in 5A Louisiana high school basketball, jumping over people, dunking on people, talking shit to people in people's face as a 15-year-old. I mean, everybody in the building knew, like, Jesus, man, this guy is different. And he's better at football? And he's better at football. <laughs> and he's better at football. I mean, Will Wade told us two years ago that Brian Thomas is the best basketball player in the state. Remember, we were like, who's in the state that's good? And he was like, well, I mean, the best guy's playing football. <laughs> Sorry, Will. It's always going to be that way. So, um, I agree with you, cuz. I agree that, that, that Brian Thomas – and look, man, look, the, the, the offense has been efficient. They've been effective. They've been winning. They've been taking care of business. Brian Thomas has been involved. But I think he is next year – I think Brian Thomas is your number one threat at wide receiver. I think he's the number one option on LSU's team next season. He's the game breaker. I expect him to go pro after next year. I mean, just because of his physical tools, I'd imagine he'd be a second or third round pick this year because he'd go to the combine and people would be like, holy shit. This guy's 6'4", 215, jumps like that, catches everything, runs and like runs a like a deer. <laughs> I mean, like... I'll take him. <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> we'll take him. Yeah, I mean, he just he he's. I agree with you. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Good call, Cuz. And we got a text coming in from Stephen from BR, SEC Coach of the Year, Hypel Smarter Kelly. Man, I think Kelly's made up a ton of ground over the last couple of weeks. You know, I think that Hypel was probably you know the the odds-on favorite for this um, early in the season with for what I think. Heupel, it probably for the majority of the early part of the year, was probably the odds-on favorite to become the national coach is, yeah. of the year. You know what I mean? For what Tennessee, the turnaround mm -hmm. that they had this season. I think that Kelly is in the conversation for sure. You know I mean? I think that obviously Sonny Dykes and TCU, right. national conversation. But I think SEC, I think it means a lot for LSU and Kelly to get there in year one. 
I would have said three weeks ago that I would have bet on Heupel. Right now, I'd vote for Kelly. I mean, him taking his team to Atlanta in year one, when you lay out the entire storyline, who were the three options he said? Heupel, Kelly, Kelly. and who? Smart. Smart. Mm -hmm. smart. And look, man, Kirby Smart, he deserves a ton of credit because of where his program is. And Smart had the vision of what he wanted to build. He has built it, and the thing is a monster. He wanted Alabama football. He's got Alabama football. Georgia is now the king of the mountain, and everybody's trying to catch up. Heupel has turned his program around into a winner, you know, in a very short amount of time and made them really relevant. They're a one-loss team, and the only team that they lost to is the number one team in the country. Everybody else they've beaten. They've taken care of whoever the schedule put in front of their face outside of Georgia. That's pretty tough when you play the schedule that Tennessee played this season. Traveling to Pitt, SEC schedule, winning at LSU, beating Bama. They, they're accomplished. But if you lay out what Brian Kelly has dealt with in the one year that he's been on the job in Baton Rouge, going back to when he took the job and the, key, you know, and the team goes to Houston, plays a bowl game with 38 scholarship players. you got quarterbacks playing wide receiver. you got guys out of position. you got walk-ons all over the place. And, and then you build the SEC Western Division champ through the transfer portal, through recruiting, and through all – of the new faces that are, you know, chasing this title, man, I, I think that, you know, I'm, I'm hugely biased. I, I am obviously been around this story more than any of the others and understand this one more than, you know, what's happened at Tennessee, what's going on in other markets. But when you look at the LSU story, what competes with this in the league? There's good stories. Heupel in Tennessee, I get. He should get a lot of votes. Smart in Georgia, king of the mountain. He's built what he wanted to build, and now it's, you know, really kind of crew. It's on cruise control, it looks like, where it's recruiting itself. They're winning games on Saturdays. They're the best program in college football. But in year one, did anybody expect to happen in Baton Rouge what Brian Kelly is doing? Nobody did. I was at SEC Media Days. Nobody expected this. And now here he is pulling his team into Atlanta playing for a title in year one? Hell, man, that sounds like coach of the year type stuff. Right? I mean, it does to me. So, I mean, however those three pie the votes up, however those votes, you know, come in and, and, and are split up, I, I see every side. I would cast my vote for Kelly. I think it's the best story. I think it's the, it's, it, it's the best coaching job. I, I think, you know, I mean, come on. You, you take Brian Kelly out of this out of this organization, and what do you have? It doesn't take too long ago to think about what you had. You, you, you had a absolute shit show. Mm. I mean, you had people fleeing. You had lawsuits coming down the pipe. You had uh, perceptions of the program to, to be where they were. You had fighting fans. You, you, had, no, you had no support in how you had players that were, that, that were leaving in the middle of the night. Nobody wanted to be there. And now you're the league champs on the Western side, on the West side, in one, in 11. Well, they, it hadn't even been a year. I mean, it, the night they played the SEC title game, the first weekend of December, when did they announce Brian Kelly? I mean, I know he is. His, his reign started to take shape in January. I November, think he got the job think, right? in December. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think he got the job like December 11th, 12th. Okay. So you're talking about playing the league championship. December 1st. He got the job? Mm -hmm. Okay, so just over a year. They're playing the game on December 5th, I believe. December 4th, 3rd. 2nd? 3rd. 3rd. 367 Fourth? days later. That's wild. After you hired him. 367 days after you hired Brian Kelly, you're in the league championship. I mean, man, that's 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 coach of the year type stuff. Not only is it league coach of the year type stuff, that's national coach of the year type stuff. Sonny Dykes might get it at TCU, probably deserves it. Who was last year's SEC coach of the year? Uh, probably smart. Because the past three years, they've been national title winners. So, SEC coaches of the year. So Kirby, then... Saban. Uh, Saban. Yeah. And then Kirby. Kirby, Kirby oh, Saban, twice. Kirby. Okay, yeah. Then Ed. Was, did Ed win it in 2019? I would imagine so. Did he? Wait, but didn't we just name the last three? Oh, no, that's four. Okay. 2019. I mean, how could he not have won? They won everything. Yeah, he would have to. Yeah. 
that would be a real slap in the face for all that oh if they were like well this definitely wasn't you <laughs> hunter hall i mean the auburn game was almost a loss hunter y'all almost hired rich rodriguez who cares <laughs> y'all got saban we won you know what i mean like who who cares about what you know th th that it, you was almost i mean that's fair that sounds very gumpy of you <laughs> well he is he's in awesome a state of mourning i know he is we love hunter hall though i do love hunter i do too it's just easy to make fun of y'all <laughs> They've never been here before. They're down. Yeah. Know, that's the best part. That is true. It is. They're freaking um, out. They're freaking out. The walls are you know closing I mean? in. Like, you're are. like, what's going on? That's tough. Nick's going on vacation already? No. That's Looking tough. for another job. <laughs> <laughs> what if he's the coach of Texas next year? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> would you take Nick Saban over Brian Kelly? Uh, no, I would not at this point. Ooh, that's strong. Hot tick. I would not. I mean. Okay. you take Kirby? Yes. Over Michael? BK? No. There's only one man in the world. Kirby. Hmm. But I mean, like, if you were like, I, I, I'm going to play with Kirby and you play with Kelly, I'd be I'm like, cool. I'm good. Yeah, yeah I'm cool. Hmm. Um, LSU got the guy. Big Saban goes LSU to Texas. LSU did get the guy. To go coach Arch. <laughs> Saban goes to A&M. Sarkeesian moves back down to offensive coordinator. Get the band back together. <laughs> <laughs> Just do it in Texas. Uh. I'm in the SEC again. Saban. Miss Terry, she loves she loves Austin now. Miss Terry, they got they got plenty of boats. Lake Travis, I'm out there. Oh, that's true. That would be like a lateral move for him. It'd be a great a lateral move. He's already got the lake. Yeah, he's in Georgia. That's right. Tuscaloosa is a beautiful place, mm -hmm. Hunter. Make yeah, sure you that. thank thank Nikki for all of the upgrades. <laughs> In the, the actually, in the downtown river walks, in the downtown area. Brian going to get us a, uh, a bridge yeah. built. A what? A bridge. The new Bri bridge. Bri the BK Bridge. Yeah. Kelly's Crossing. Kelly's Crossing. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. You're welcome, city. Yeah. I'll bill you, Sharon. <laughs> and, then we still, and then we have Harold Perkins Road. Mm, we got where you got Perkins Road. Uh -huh. It's a major artery too. of the city. You're welcome, Perk. That should have been a recruiting tip. <laughs> I mean, Harold. Been. They named the thoroughfare of the city after you, bro. Already, I mean, the largest road in the in the in the Baton Rouge is named Perkins Road. It's all after you, man. Um, appreciate everybody for being here. Thanks for uh, interacting. Thanks for all the calls, for the voicemails, for the entire crew. Uh, what is tonight? Wednesday. Mic'd up. Mic'd up. We have Paul Maneri coming in studio oh, to defend wow. himself. Maybe Ochinko might make a visit as well. He's got to. He feels like this has been some unfettered comments that he has to defend himself against these Ochinko stories, oh, these this, Kramer this could stories. Be good. Yeah, he's coming to take the stand. That's fine. <laughs> Are you going to share the video of him being uh, pranked by the snake? Get the snake. We like, showed it at uh, when yeah, we did that at Fred's. Showed we showed, showed it on the big Fred's. screen. He was like, "Get that off the screen." So. <laughs> That's good That's stuff, man. Nice. All right, appreciate everybody being out there. Make sure and like, share. If you have not subscribed, subscribe before you get out of here. Have a great day. We're back with you tomorrow morning, 7 a.m.